Hi guys, it's Kino. Welcome to another video. So today's pick a card reading is going to be an energy check-in for the connection between you and your twin flame, your soulmate, your divine counterpart, whichever label you resonate with for your own connection. I will refer to them as your person in the reading just to be inclusive of all the different types of soul connections, but the label is not the most important thing. The important thing is the bond that you and this soul share. And if you were called to click on this video today, this is a sign that your higher self or your person's higher self or both has a message for you about this connection. So that is what we're going to get into today. I also want to announce that today's reading is a collaboration with the beautiful and talented Cindy, aka Amorinette. Where do I even begin? She is one of my oldest friends, a dear friend in this tarot community. Not only is she an amazing tarot reader, she is also a beautiful, beautiful painter and a beautiful singer, which I just found out recently. She just started on her musical journey. She released her first song called Ended in Winter, which is absolutely gorgeous. Ever since it came out, I've been like walking around my house and singing it. It's like been stuck in my head and I'm just so excited for her musical journey and her future releases. So I'm gonna have her social media links linked down below if you want to check her out. In particular, her readings tend to focus on love topics and she definitely does not shy away from the 18 plus topics. So I would definitely check out her channel if that's something you're interested in. But what I love about Cindy, not just her readings, but her whole vibe and her whole approach to spirituality is that she embraces the darkness. She embraces our shadow and is especially passionate about empowering the dark feminine energy, which I love. That is an energy that I would love to tap into, that I try to tap into even with my own creative projects. So we vibe together so well. Cindy, if you're watching this, I love you and I'm so proud of you and I'm so excited to see what you create. And thank you so much for your friendship and thank you for sharing your art with us and your messages with us. This community is so lucky to have you. So with that being said, this reading here on my channel, we are gonna be focusing on the spiritual connection. So the 5D connection that exists between your higher self and your person's higher self and we're going to see what the energies are between you in the 5d and how each of you is experiencing the soul connection right now and then on cindy's channel it's going to be more so focused on the 3d aspect of things so what is going on between your human selves and what your person has in mind what their human self <laughs> has in mind for the future of your 3D connection. Ooh, 333 as I'm talking about 3D connection. Okay, so there are four readings for you guys to choose from today. So I'm going to show you each of these crystals up close one by one, and then please pick whichever one you feel drawn to the most. Number one is purple aragonite. Number two is clear quartz. Number three is fluorite. And number four is phalerite. Okay, so as always, take all the time you need to pick. You can pause the video if you need to. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with number one. Hi, number ones. So if you guys chose the purple aragonite, this is going to be your reading. So I wanted to show you guys the full breakdown of today's reading to start off. Like I mentioned in the intro, the reading here on my channel is going to focus on the 5D connection between you and your person. So we're going to start by taking a look at the energy between your higher selves with these cards that I have laid out here. So we're going to take a look at the energy of your higher self, of your person's higher self, and see what energies are connecting you. Then we're going to get into the tarot and see how does their higher self communicate with you. So in your day-to-day -day life, what kind of messages and signs does your person's higher self send you and how are they currently helping you in your life? Then we're going to flip it around and see how does your higher self 
communicate with them in their day-to-day -day life? What kind of signs and messages is your higher self sending to your person? And how are you helping your person day-to-day? -day? Then we're gonna see how aware your person is of your higher self's presence in their life. How aware are they of the messages and signs that you are sending them? And how aware are you of your person's higher self in your life? How aware are you of their presence and of the signs and messages that they are sending you on a day-to-day -day basis? Then we're gonna see what does your person's higher self want to tell you right now and finish off the reading with advice from your spirit guides about this connection. So that is gonna be the reading on my channel. Um, Cindy has made a list of the full breakdown of her reading as well. I will put it up on the screen here. Like I mentioned in the intro, this is gonna be more so focused on the 3D connection and where it is headed. And there is also an extended reading, which we'll get into 18 plus stuff. If that is something that you're interested in, be sure to check out Cindy's reading as well to get the full picture of the 5D and 3D aspects of your connection. So without further ado, let's get into it. We have these cards over here, which are gonna represent your higher self, these cards, which will represent your person's higher self, and then this card in the middle represents what connects the two of you. If listening to these descriptions, you find that the energies are flipped, this sounds more like your person and this sounds more like you, that is totally fine. You can flip the energies around. You may even find that you resonate with both sides, which is a really strong sign that you and your person are mirroring each other. However, if you don't really see yourself anywhere in this spread, then it is likely that this is not your group. So let's take a look at your cards. We are starting off with the turtle. the devil, and Mukite Jasper. Then for your person's cards, we have the elephant, 333, as I'm holding up the elephant card. Um, seeing elephants, whether that is, I don't know if you'd see an elephant in real life, but seeing images and symbols of elephants or seeing repeating number threes, that could be a sign that your person's higher self is communicating with you. We have the death card. And fluorite. And for the card in the middle, the energy that connects you with your person, we have self-love. That's so beautiful. This cup in the middle reminds me of the Ace of Cups. Okay, so let's start with your energy. You are coming through as the turtle, which is associated with the element of water. Your soul could be drawn to the sea or feel at ease around large bodies of water. You could live by the water in this lifetime or you did live by the water in a significant past lifetime of yours. You may even resonate with having had past lives as an aquatic creature or having past lives in an aquatic world, whether that was earth or somewhere else. But what I'm picking up from this turtle card is that I feel that your soul, okay, what I was about to say is that, that your soul is highly misunderstood. However, it is being clarified to me that that is true on earth. When your soul incarnates to earth, your soul is highly misunderstood. So your soul may actually feel at ease being incarnated in different types of worlds where they are more seen and they are more understood, almost like where they are more the norm, so to speak. So I wonder if your soul is one that is either unfamiliar with earth or just is not, like earth is not its favorite, <laughs> is kind of how it's coming through. Just because your soul tends to be misunderstood here. 
your soul is extremely intelligent. You are extremely intelligent. You are multi-talented. You have brilliant insights and you have brilliant compassion and you have wonderful gifts that you can bring to this world. But the type of environment that you need, like the physical environment you need, the needs of your body and mind, um, the type of energetic environment you need around you, the type of support, the type of workflow or work structure that you need to really thrive may not be so readily available on earth or at least in the current society that we have or the metrics that humans use to deem people's intelligence and productivity and competency and like value in the workforce are just too narrow. I'm thinking of sea turtles because I'm pretty sure that when sea turtles are in the water, they can go really, really fast, but on land, they are slow. And something coming up with your energy is like, um, like a turtle being judged by its ability to fly type of energy, a fish being judged by its ability to climb a tree type of energy. This is kind of how your soul feels on earth. It's like, why are you judging my worth as a human with all of these random standards that just completely miss the point? I'm also looking at the devil card and as you can see this person or these cats i should say feel chained and they feel stuck this group you may be one of those who kind of wonder why you chose to come to this planet like no offense to earth i love earth we love earth but you know, sometimes I see people who are like, why did I incarnate here? Never again. I don't want to come back. And and you may kind of feel like that sometimes. You may kind of feel like a fish out of water on or earth or that it's just not the best environment that lends itself to your talents and to your gifts. And if that is how you feel, I want to confirm that to you. A difference that I can see between you and your person is that I feel like you make decisions and you take actions by feeling things through. It's like you feel the energies around you and you are guided by them. Whereas for your person, it's almost like this instantaneous action or this instantaneous decision that just comes straight from their gut. There's not really much thought to it. There's not even... A perception on their end that they are sensing something, that they are picking up on something, that they are feeling something. It just comes to them immediately and they just go with it. It's like a fire in their belly that just propels them in the direction. And, and if you were to ask your person why they made a certain decision, they would probably not be able to tell you why. They're like, I just did it. <laughs> I just felt like it. I just felt called to do it. So they are really guided by their gut feelings and and they might come across as impulsive to some people whereas i feel like you come across as very considerate and attentive you take into account all of the energies around you and like you feel it through you feel what would be best for this situation with the devil card this can be something that gets you stuck sometimes. Why is this? You, you have the gift of being an empath for sure. Not only can you sense your own energies and your own emotions, but you sense everything around you as well. This can get you stuck because as someone who just feels your own energy, that's all you have to consider. You just have to consider how you feel. You just have to be responsible for your own feelings. And you are just responsible for your own feelings. But when you're picking up on everything else so vividly, you can fall into this trap of thinking because you can sense it, you are also responsible for it. It's like this trick that your brain falls for because your brain is used to feeling your own emotions. 
and feeling like it's responsible for managing them and taking care of them. And I feel like your brain, this is it. This is it. This is why like earth, earthly things may not feel like they're built for you because your human brain, it's like your human brain can't really grasp the concept of your empathic gift and that sometimes what you're feeling and sensing is not you. And your brain is like, well, if I'm feeling this, then it must be my responsibility. I must have to manage this. I must have to do something about this. And so it's kind of like you you take on everyone's stuff. You take on all the energies as something that you must consider, something that you must surveil, that you must check on, like that you're responsible for it, which is not true, but, but how can you not be when you will feel it? Whew. So yes, I, I can see being on earth could be quite difficult for this group. And I feel like that is something that makes you trapped and like hard to move forward. It's kind of like when you have so many talents that you cannot choose one to commit to. When you have so many ideas that you can't finish any of them. You have so much to feel that trying to honor it all and be responsible for it all can sometimes get you stuck. Whereas I feel like your person doesn't really have that awareness, which is actually comes through as an advantage in this case because they can just tap into their own, their own gut without even really intentionally trying to feel into anything and just move forward. That's what the, the death card is. It's like complete surrender, just letting go and moving forward. They're just being propelled forward by their gut instincts. You know what I just realized? So you have Mukite Jasper and the word Muka it means like flowing water or running water in an Aboriginal language. And then fluorite comes from, I think it's Latin and it means to flow. So like you both have this energy of flow on both of your sides. And I think getting into the flow is like an important theme or an important lesson in this lifetime for both of you, um, as well as self-love, which we will get into. But I feel like being in the flow is a challenge for you when you feel everything. And like, even in this connection, you may sometimes feel heaviness from this connection or feel chained to it. Like I'm imagining these are the two people who are incarnated and this is like the higher self or one of your higher selves. Maybe some of you resonate with sharing a soul or sharing a higher self with this person but I almost feel like my group number ones you might feel this sense of responsibility to continuously be checking in on the energy of this connection checking in on your energy checking in on your person's energy and maybe even feeling responsible for their energy or moving in a, in a certain way or moving the connection in a certain way um which I actually don't think is necessarily beneficial to the connection. I feel like complete surrender and letting both of your individual journeys unfold however they unfold is actually the most beneficial thing for this connection. We have your person with the death card who's like in a complete energy of surrender. And it's interesting that this death horse is walking away from the middle. And even in the self-love card, these two people are facing away from each other. I don't know if you're, if you are apart from this person in the 3D or if there's like a distance between the two of you in the 3D right now. I do feel that from a soul perspective, you know, this, person is looking at your energy this person is looking at their energy from a soul perspective you may be called at this time to just focus on your individual paths because ironically that is what you will bring you closer together here in the 3d it may feel like the opposite because it it feels like you're moving apart but from a soul perspective this is actually what will bring you closer together 
is just like completely letting go and just being present with yourself and being present with your own journey. And judging from these energies here, that seems like something that is easy for your person to do, almost as if it's a no-brainer. Your person has the crystal of fluorite, which is like, it feels like a harmonizer. It feels like a detoxifier. It feels like a harmonizer. And I think that your person's higher self has this deep understanding of the constant transformation and the constant reinvention of self, the constant cycle of ego death and awakening and a dark night and an ego death and awakening that we will go through over and over again in our lifetimes. It's almost like they just do it naturally. The elephant is making me think that your person is a, a very wise and probably old soul. And they just kind of instinctively go into these cycles. Even if their 3D self doesn't have that language of like, I'm going through a dark night of the soul. I'm experiencing an ego death. It's something that they just instinctually do and instinctually know when to do. Like, I know I sound like a broken record, but this person is very tapped into their instincts and like tapped into their gut. And I'm just realizing they're the fire element that's connected to the solar plexus, which, which is literally like your gut. Um, just like how a caterpillar instinctively knows to go into a cocoon because it's about to transform. And also, by the way, sea turtles instinctively know to go to the sea when they're born. They just like, I feel like their egg is laid and then their mom's like, bye. And then they just like come out of the egg themselves and just know to go to the sea. So you both have this instinct in you. You both have this fire that is driving you on the inside to propel you in the right direction. But I feel like you get stuck by trying to consider all of the energies around you. It's as if the baby sea turtle hatched out of their egg and there's this deep, ancient, ancient wisdom within them. And oh my gosh, like Mukite Jasper, this is like ancestral wisdom. Like your inner guidance is this deep, ancient wisdom, the same way the sea turtle knows to go to the sea. The sea turtle doesn't stop and look around like, are all the other baby sea turtles okay? Is anyone offended by me thriving and moving to the sea? Is anyone uncomfortable? Like, they don't, they don't pay attention. Well, I don't, I'm, I've never been in the mind of a sea turtle, but in that moment, they're just so driven by the fire in them, by the wisdom in them, that they know where they need to go. And I think it's just, it, it may be like being overwhelmed by how you pick up on other energies, the either an inability to discern or like feeling guilty for discerning and like just just focusing on your own inner guidance. But yeah, I feel like that is something that gets you stuck sometimes. With your person, they... <laughs> Their soul feels that the process of transformation is messy and ugly and chaotic because it is. The process of death and rebirth is messy and it's ugly. And so I feel like your person, it's like when they're about to go through one of these transformations, they instinctively want to distance themselves. Um, this is a really weird analogy, but I'm thinking of how some animals when they are when their soul is ready to pass on they'll instinctively like go far away or go hide um like when they're ready to take on a new form and i feel like this person kind of does the same thing when something deep within them when that when that ancient wisdom tells them it's time for a transformation they just instinctively retreat and so in the 3d that might look like they have been less communicative or they have voiced that they're going to walk away or you feel their presence less in your life or you go into like a quote unquote separation even though you're not really separated. They just kind of know when to do this and they know on a soul level that retreating in this way will actually create more harmony in your connection while they 
deal with the ugliness and the chaos of reinvention. And they also, this is so beautiful because this is also showing a level of trust that their soul has with you. They're like, I gotta go off and transform myself. And I trust that when I come back in my new form, oh, I'm getting emotional. I trust that when I come back in my new form, you will still recognize me because I know how good you are at picking up on energies. I know that no matter how different I look, no matter how differently I'm presenting myself, you will still see through that and you'll remember it's me and, and you will still love and accept this new version of me all the versions of me, because probably from the, the second you met me, you could already see every single version of me I have been and every single version of me I will become. You saw it all compacted into me in that second. And so this is just, this is just me expanding and unfolding and, and taking up all of those versions through time. Ooh. Going back to this Mukite Jasper and the message of ancestral healing, um, here in the 3D, it can be a powerful stone for healing intergenerational wounds. And so this empathic gift that you have, it might be something that you've inherited, something that your ancestors needed to survive, like they needed to be able to pick up on others' emotions and subtle energies. But also the difficulty with letting go that could also stem from an ancestral wound. Um, if there's a fear of like, I can't let this person go because I'm afraid they won't come back or I can't surrender. I can't surrender to the outcome of this connection because I'm afraid I will lose this person. I'm afraid we won't come back together. That fear of letting go, that may also be um, ancestral or it may stem from past lives with the death card as well um, this can talk about the cycle of like you know death and reincarnation so it could be something from a past life with this person that makes letting go difficult or there's I don't want to say an irrational fear but a fear of losing them that is very powerful and that sometimes gets in the way Self-love in the middle, I love this. Like the more you lean into your self-love journey, the more you cultivate love for yourself, the more connected you will feel to your person. The more you will feel their messages and their love coming through, the more you will understand them, the more you will be able to show up for them and pour love into them. Self-love is the key to coming into union with this person to stepping into that union energy with them. And it's the key to getting closer. So I wanna read the self-love passage from the Ocean Dreams guidebook. This is so beautiful. Okay, here it is. Oh, I love that. So the passage is on page 142 and 143, but I love 143 because it's like, I love you because that's the number of letters that's in each word. So let's read the self-love passage. Deep magic, self-discovery, awakening. I am attuned to my magnificence. I am free in my expressions. I find passion in all that I do. Aphrodite was the Greek goddess of love, pleasure, beauty, and fertility. Worshipped widely as a goddess of the sea, she is also closely linked to the goddesses Venus, Isis, Ishtar, and Astarte. Emerging from the foam of the ocean, it was said that a white rose was formed from the waves of her birth. When Aphrodite later lost her beloved Adonis, a mixture of her tears and his blood produced a beautiful red rose, which has since become a universal symbol of the goddess. Aphrodite appears as a symbol of your inner divinity and the graceful, nurturing beauty that emerges through your self-love. She encourages you to step into your power and celebrate your magnificence, to reclaim your sovereignty, yes, and channel all that you do from the gateway of your heart. Being open to self-love is truly an act of faith. It helps us navigate the world with a sense of peace and empathy for others and enforces our own boundaries when we need them most. From this place of understanding, we may be less affected by criticism or judgment because we know that each person is on their own journey towards self-love. 
How can I luxuriate in my own self-care more? Self-love can help us transmute the moments of disillusion we experience into tenderness and growth. It is a compass for how we choose to interact on this planet and a gentle ally that is always waiting at the sidelines. This wisdom may also blossom through those moments of trial and error after being hurt or let down by others. Like the rising of a phoenix, self-love can be built from a splintered foundation in knowing what we need and what does not work for us through a process of elimination. This is a relationship that takes tending, nurturing, and care. It can also point to a need for surrounding yourself with energies, people, and environments that add value to your life. This is a sacred balance that allows others to shine as well. It is time to bring even more inspiration and light into the chambers of your heart. So lots to talk about here. Um, Aphrodite or more specifically, the relationship between Aphrodite and Adonis could be relevant to this connection. You may feel a link to the planet Venus um, or have Venusian placements like Taurus and Libra or Pisces because Venus is exalted in Pisces. Um, your person could have these placements as well. We also have Capricorn and Scorpio energy here, which could be a confirmation. Also so cool that we have the story of Aphrodite being born from the sea and we spoke about your soul perhaps having a connection to the sea or having past lives in aquatic worlds that may be something that you want to explore i love that this passage has talked about reclaiming your your sovereignty like reclaiming your energetic sovereignty which is not only the ability to discern this energy is mine this energy is not mine um not just being able to discern and acknowledge that, but honoring it and saying, I am responsible for my energy and you are responsible for your energy. And this passage talks about those boundaries as well. And I love that it affirms choosing your energetic sovereignty and honoring your boundaries is not, is not incompatible with showing empathy and compassion to others. In fact, loving yourself shows others guides others on their own journey towards self-love so it is super important in this connection with your person and will bring you closer together um and yeah even at the end of this passage it's talking about how like surrounding yourself with the right people and the right environments is so important so we're going to get into the tarot now and see how the connection between your higher selves is reflected in the 3D. I can't really do the, the kind of shuffling that I always do with this deck because she's too small. So <laughs> we're just going to do the like overhand shuffle with her. So let's see. I'm just reading from the list. <laughs> How does their higher self communicate with you? What kind of messages and signs does your person's higher self send to you and how do they help you? We have the Queen of Cups which that makes a lot of sense. You guys are my, you're my clairsentient queens, queens, kings, and emperors. And we have the high priestess and the nine of wands, which fell out together. Lots of divine feminine energy here. The queen of cups, the high priestess, the nine of wands is related to the moon, which is also <laughs> related to divine feminine energy. But yeah, this is very much giving the feeling of clear sentience. So your person's higher self most often is communicating to you through your emotions we will see later on in this reading how aware you are of it because i wonder if at times you are picking up on their emotions and maybe feel like it is your own um maybe you are aware maybe you're like oh yep 
my person's my person's feeling happy right now my person's feeling excited right now my person's feeling nervous right now you can pick up on these emotions and it could also be in the sense that for example if you suddenly feel overwhelming joy that could be something like their higher self has just given you encouragement or their higher self has just given you a hug like i feel like it comes through in feelings also the way all actually all of these have that kind of image this queen has her hands on her lower abdomen these hands are reaching like down to the lower parts and then these hands are also down so you could feel things in your lower stomach like in your sacral chakra area which is so funny because that's related to water too like there's just so much there's so much water coming through yeah feelings like in your lower stomach or in your womb area also speaking of the sacral chakra this person's higher self likely also speaks to you through art so that could be art that you are consuming for example a song that you are listening to a book that you're reading a movie that you're watching or it could be art that you create yourself like if you if you create things, you could literally channel messages from your person's higher self into your art. And especially any art that you're experiencing that evokes really intense emotions in you. For example, if you're ever listening to, to a song and suddenly you start like crying your eyes out and you're like, this is interesting. <laughs> like, sure, it's a good song, but why am I having such an intense emotional reaction to it? it's probably because their higher self is speaking something very powerful to you through that song. They are the ones evoking that emotion in you. And also, if you ever have really intense emotional reactions, even though it doesn't relate to something you've experienced in this lifetime, it could be because a past life memory is being, um, is being triggered. Like if you're watching a movie or reading a book and you're like, why do I relate to these characters so much? Like I haven't experienced anything like this before and yet I'm like crying my eyes out at their story. It may be because to your soul, it is reminiscent of something that you and your person have gone through in a previous lifetime. I think that a lot of the communication that happens is inward like the queen of cups out of the cups court cards she tends to turn inward more with her cup being closed the high priestess is very much about the inner world as well so that does that's not to say that your person doesn't show you signs in the outside world but i do think that it's more things you experience internally like strong emotions being evoked like we just talked about um it could be like claircognizance or telepathic communication that you experience you could also hear more from this person's higher self at nighttime whether you are awake at nighttime and it's just like quieter so the messages from them come through more or it could also be when you are sleeping they may communicate to you a lot in your dreams i do feel that their communication style is a little bit subtle like it's it's not so out there and in your face and it's kind of like this special thing just between the two of you so for example if they did send you a sign in the outside world it would be something that just you understand do you know what i mean like if there was suddenly a huge lightning bolt everyone's gonna notice that everyone's going to be like, what the F just happened? But if, if you're out and a song is playing, not everyone's going to react to the song. It's, it's basically, they're saying like, this is how you know, it's just for you. It's like our sec secret language. I'm not trying to be super out there and communicate to you in a way that everybody notices. It feels low key. It feels subtle. And I, I, in a way, I feel like they choose this style of communication so that you know it's not just in your head because it's too specifically for you. You know, like if there was a sign that everybody could see, 
then you could dismiss it as like, oh, I'm sure everybody thought that was for them. Does that make sense? Like they want to send you a sign that is just for you. Yeah. So how does your higher self communicate with them? Their higher self is likely to be more vocal with you when you're struggling and they want to give you words of encouragement. I feel like they're really helpful in pushing you out of your comfort zone and helping you to keep going when you're starting to lose hope or like starting to lose steam. They also help you to stay optimistic. So if you're ever feeling down or if your thoughts are spiraling in a negative way, a little visit from this person's higher self, I feel like it can just quickly cheer you up. They have a very special way of cheering you up. We have the Ten of Swords. <laughs> and the Six of Swords. Okay. Lots of water for how their higher self communicates with you. Lots of air for how your higher self communicates with them. I kind of giggled when the Ten of Swords came out because it sort of gave me the feeling that your higher self is extremely talkative <laughs> to your person's higher self. You are sending them messages all the time. You may think about this person a lot and it's kind of coming through that just as much as you think of them, you are sending messages their way and you are sending signs their way. It was even sort of coming through as like your higher self spams them with messages <laughs> and is, is checking in on them a lot throughout the day. And the more you think about them, the more this increases. Because we have all of these swords here, it's quite likely that your higher self does communicate to them through words. So, you know, in written text, there may be certain words or phrases or statements that like jump off the page. Again, certain ways of wording things that are very specific to your connection. Like if you have a history with this person, there may be certain phrases that you've used to each other or like references that very specifically remind them of you. Um, things may pop up that are exact words that you've spoken to them before. Uh, things like your name, your birthday, the place that you come from. Um, these kinds of words will follow them around. They will jump out um, on books, on signs, on captions, on articles. They may overhear them in conversation as well. Yeah, it very much feels like it's through words. I also do think that this person thinks about you a lot, like you pop up in their mind a lot. And there's a lot of things that remind them of you. Sometimes they may even feel like everything, everything weirdly reminds them of you. And they're like, I don't know what's going on. Like, am I just looking for ways to link everything back to Group number one, like, is this me? Is my mind just finding ways to link everything to you? Or does life just keep showing me things that are linked to you? You know what I mean? So sometimes, sometimes they may kind of feel not crazy, but wonder if it's in their head. Just with the, the sheer frequency that these messages come up and, and just the frequency at which they are reminded of you. It, it seems like a lot to them. And also with the Six of Swords and the Ten of Swords, there's this feeling of like, even if they tried to stop, even if they tried to stop thinking about you, forget about you and move on, like these messages will just keep popping up. So let's see. How aware is your person of your higher self being present? We have the Six of Cups, which this fell on the floor. Um, very aware, okay. We have, oh my gosh, 
the Page of Cups and the Two of Wands. Yeah, so yeah, they're very aware. And it makes sense, like, based on what we just talked about, they're, they're consciously saying to themselves, like, oh, that reminds me of group number one. Oh, there is a sign of group number one again. This is happening really freaking often. So, yes, they are very much aware. Um, in terms of their knowledge of this spiritual connection, I do think... I don't know if they're completely convinced i feel like they're at least open to the idea of a spiritual connection with you it is something that they've thought about it is a question that they have pondered although admittedly they seem to not know much about it it's kind of like i wonder if we have some kind of weird connection but then like at the same time i don't even know what that really means i don't even know what that really entails so it's more like they're open to it they've thought about it before they wonder about that they're curious about it, but they're very much aware that that something is going on, like that some kind of communication is going on. Um, if you've met this person before, they likely just felt really, really strangely familiar with you instantly. They likely just felt like they had known you forever and there's also this weird thing they've never experienced before where like they for example they would think about you and then a sign of you comes up or they would think about you and then a message from you comes in like you texted them and it's this weird thing where they're like am i sensing the future like did i just predict 10 seconds into the future because i thought about you i felt your energy and then you message me or and then I thought about you and then I saw like your birthday that doesn't make sense you know and it's it's still I feel like it happens frequently but it still kind of surprises or confuses them but they're not completely skeptical about it I think they're like is there something weird going on like am I low-key psychic <laughs> they're kind of playing with that idea and like yes they are we've just spoken about how much of an old and wise soul they are. You can see that there's a focus on this elephant's third eye. We've spoken about how they instinctively, they just instinctively know and follow their inner guidance. So I feel like your person is a lot more tapped in than they realize. You probably already know this. Like you've probably seen how like tapped in and awake your person is and they don't even realize it. Um, but yeah, they're definitely aware, not just aware, but curious. But I also feel like they're not, they're not going to jump to conclusions or like even try to come to a conclusion. It's, they're not interested in like, I'm going to get to the bottom of this and I'm going to figure out once and for all why this is happening. They're more just in like experiencing it and vibing it, vibing with it. And honestly, I feel like they're kind of enjoying coming up with, with theories of what could be happening. I don't think it's something that really, it could be overwhelming at times, but it's like, they're not mad at it. <laughs> it's kind of the vibe. And I think overall, they're just really curious. And I think another reason that they, they don't want to try too much to decipher what's happening is because there's a part of them that's like, at the end of the day, I can never really know. You know, the same way at the end of the day, we can never really know, like, what, where do we go after we die? We can only really speculate about it because everyone who died hasn't lived to tell a tale. <laughs> like, they're more just open to different theories, I guess. So they're like, yeah, it could be, it could be that I'm predicting the future. It could be that when I think about you, like I manifest a sign from you. It could be that you're like, we're somehow telepathically communicating. It could also be coincidences. And I don't really know. And I, I don't think I ever will know, but I'm just aware that it's happening and I'm curious about it. So that's kind of their vibe. And let's see. How aware are you 
of their higher self's presence in your life. How aware are you of the signs that they show you? The Seven of Swords. The Seven of Swords and the Ten of Wands. Mm, someone is overthinking a little bit. So I do think that you are very aware of their higher self's presence in your life to the point that you may tend to overthink or overanalyze the messages that they send you. An example of this is like, let's say someone texted you hi, and then you're sitting there and looking at the text and you're like, oh my God, what did they mean by that? Well, they meant hi, they, like they're just saying hi. So the same way you can, you can beat a, a text message to death and like exhaust yourself by thinking about all the million things it could mean and what could be implied, you might kind of do the same thing with signs and messages from this person's higher self. Like, or also overthink about if it's really from them or not. You know, like, is this really a message? Is this just in my head? And if it is a sign, then what does it mean? And what could it mean about our future? Does it mean that this is gonna happen? Does it mean that that is gonna happen? And if speculating about those kind of things is fun, who am I to tell you not to do that? I can't tell you what to do, but just judging from the energy of these cards, like the Seven of Swords and the Ten of Wands, that's heavy, that's not fun. It, it kind of is giving the feeling of, like feeling pressure, feeling pressure to discern what this message meant and what it means for the future. And it like, it turns, it kind of turns this lighthearted, beautiful thing of like, oh, their soul was popping in to say hello. Their soul was popping in to give me words of encouragement. Like the, oh, that's so cute. And it is so cute. Like the way they, the way they come in and the way they bring you optimism and like want to cheer you up. It's really nice. But I, I feel like there may be too much pressure for you to like decipher like what's going to happen and what what do I do about this rather than just like enjoying that you have a connection it's kind of like when you when you read a novel but instead of just immersing yourself in the story you're in like hyper literary analysis mode or like in, you can't just like sit down and listen to a song. You have to be like, oh, it sounds like they cut this frequency in the snare. And it sounds like the reverb is a hundred milliseconds or something. Like it just, it takes you out of the experience. It takes you out of, of the beauty of just being in communication with them. And I feel like sometimes in your attempt to analyze, you might kind of add all of these extra meanings that are not there, especially like unfavorable meanings. Or, you know, like I feel like sometimes it's, and a lot of the time it's just simply them like sending you love and sending you joy and sending you healing energy. And it's, and it's almost like they would feel bad. Like, I don't, I don't want me sending you these messages to be like a burden. Cause that's what the 10 of one feel 10 of wands feels like. They're like, I just want to, I just want to make your energy lighter. Yeah. I feel like how you can know it's their higher self talking to you is because it will always lift your spirits. It will always like make you feel good and happy and your energy will feel lighter and you know it might it might be your anxious mind that is is adding these like negative contexts that aren't there or or if you're like oh my gosh that's a sign that that's a sign that we're in separation that's a sign that like our connection is over like if if there's anything negative like that that you tend to get from your analysis I would say that that's probably not their soul talking to you and that's just like your mind expecting the worst. Okay, so 
Finally, we are going to get some messages from your person's higher self, see what they would like to tell you. Wow, I love myself more and so should you. There's that self-love. So they're saying like, I'm on this self-love journey and I hope that you are as well because you deserve to love yourself. And they know that that's what's gonna bring you closer. Okay, I'm gonna shuffle them this way. I feel like they'll come out easier like that. Mm. Oh my gosh, nails. <laughs> Oh, interesting. We have, I pretend I don't care about you, which I would actually, I would not take this literally. I would take this more as their higher self saying, from the 3D perspective, it may appear right now that I don't care about you, especially if they have like walked away or if they're at a distance, it comes across as if I don't care about you, but that could not be farther from the truth. Oh, look, yes. I feel like that's them, them confirming that interpretation. They're not like, your person is not going out of their way to pretend that they don't care. They may downplay the extent of their emotions or they may, like their silence or distance could be perceived as them not caring, but they're confirming that that could not be farther from the truth. So finally, Let's get some advice from your spirit guides about this connection. Ooh, lovely image. The way this is coming out, I wonder if this is confirming like, and this doesn't matter your genders, but you know, you are this side, right? So you could be more in the feminine energy. They could be more in the mas <laughs> masculine energy. Soulmate, your soulmate is already with you in spirit. Believe this and they will manifest physically. I don't want to cover the self-love. I'll put it, um, I'll put it like this. And one more. Also very beautiful. Again, has the feminine on this side and the masculine on this side. Beware of what you are projecting for the qualities you admire in one another are qualities you both possess. Equally so, the qualities you don't like are also your own reflection. Okay, so group number ones, these are all of the messages we have as it pertains to your 5D connection. So if you are interested in knowing more about what is going on in the 3D between you and your person, what their intentions are in the 3D, what they envision for your future and whether they will be taking action towards you, be sure to check out Cindy's reading. I will have it linked down below. I will also have all of her socials linked down below if you wanna check her out and support her beautiful art. I myself have gotten a couple art commissions for her because I just, from her, I mean, because I just love her art so much. Um, thank you once again, Cindy, for collabing on this reading. Thank you guys for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. If you enjoy my content and you'd like to find me elsewhere, I'm gonna have linked down below my tarot reading Instagram, my personal Instagram, my Patreon, where you can watch tons of timeless, exclusive pick a card readings, just like this one. And you can also decide on the topics for future readings. I will link my music channel, which includes the intro song of this video. That is an original song. I will also have my latest release link down below. And finally, my vlog channel and my merch, which features the floating temple that was at the start of this video. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, my channel, and anything I do. I really, really appreciate having you here. And I'm sending so much love to you, to your person, your higher selves, your spirit guides, your spiritual teams, and all of your loved ones, both here on earth and in the other realms. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.
High number twos, so if you guys chose the clear quartz, this is going to be your reading. I'm going to start off by showing you guys the full breakdown of the reading today because there's a lot that we are going to get into. Like I mentioned in the intro, this part of the reading here on my channel is going to focus on the 5D connection. So we're going to start by seeing the energy between your higher selves with these cards that I have laid out here. We're going to look at the energy of your higher higher self, of your person's higher self, and the energies that connect the two of you. Then we're going to see higher, how, your, how your higher selves communicate with each other on a day-to-day -day basis. So we'll first see how your person's higher self communicates with you. What is their preferred method of communication? What kind of signs do they leave you? How are they helping you on a day-to-day -day basis? And how does your higher self communicate with your person? What is your higher self's preferred method of communication? What kind of signs do they leave for your person? And how do they help your person on a day-to-day -day basis? Then we're going to see how aware is your person of your higher self's presence in their life? How aware is your person of the messages and signs that are coming from you? And same for you, how aware are you of your person's higher self in your life and how aware are you of their signs and messages? Then at the end of the reading, we're going to see what your person's higher self would like to tell you and then we will get some advice from your spirit guides about this connection. So that is the whole reading today. Cindy was also so kind to send me the list for her reading. I'm going to put it up on the screen here. Um, like I also mentioned in the intro, her reading is going to focus more on the 3D side of things. So what is going on between you and your person as 3D humans and what's on your person's mind in terms of the future with you? What are their intentions? What do they want to happen between the two of you? And will they be taking any action? So with all that being said, let's get into your reading. I have these cards over here to represent you, these cards to represent your person, and this card in the middle is going to represent the energy that connects you. If listening to these descriptions, you feel like they are switched, like this sounds more like your person, this sounds more like you, that is totally fine. You are very welcome to flip the energies over. However, if you don't see yourself anywhere in this spread, then this is likely not your group. So without further ado, let's see what we have for you. For your energy, we are starting off with the gazelle. Justice. And hematite. For your person, we have the wolf, judgment, and labradorite. And then for the energy that connects the two of you, we have Akashic Waters. Very cool. Okay, I'm getting the feeling right away, first of all, both of you have such beautiful souls and I think that this actually translates to both of you being quite physically attractive, <laughs> quite physically beautiful as humans, both of you in your own unique ways. You are coming through with the element of fire and your person is coming through with the element of earth. What I think makes you so attractive is you have this energy that naturally inspires other people. When people are around you, they just automatically get this lift to their mood and their limiting beliefs start to fall away. There's something about like your influence that makes people believe in their talents and believe that anything is possible. A lot of people might see you as a role model or just someone that they look up to and they can't help but feel like capable of creating their dream future and excited for their future when they're around your energy. There's also something very beautiful about your eyes and 
you may be graceful in the way your body moves, like in your posture or your silhouette might be graceful, even if you don't necessarily feel that way. And I don't mean this in a creepy way, but I feel like people might kind of check you out or admire you and you don't really notice. You may have some secret admirers as well. But your fire, it's so gentle, you know? It's not like you are burning people with your fire. It's this gentle, warm fire that people naturally feel drawn to. And you're so kind as well. Like with justice, you have this way of being very clear and direct and honest, but always with kindness and compassion. That is a gift that your soul has. And I think something that a lot of people admire. And with hematite, this makes me think of grounding and it's very human, you know, like heme is, is blood, right? <laughs> so it, it makes me think of a, a human body. I think you have a lot of spiritual wisdom, but a gift that your soul has is translating that spiritual wisdom into a way that is like easy to understand and applicable for people. So even people who are not spiritual could greatly benefit from your spiritual wisdom. Um, it just, you have a way of explaining spiritual or philosophical concepts that it really clicks for people and your mind and your worldview is very interesting to a lot of people. I also feel like with the justice card, your higher self, your higher self is so sweet. It's like they want to honor and respect the wishes of your human self because in a way you are the same being, but your human self has its own distinct personality and its own distinct preferences and your soul has its own distinct personality and its own distinct preferences and you know they both come through to create the unique being that is your current incarnation but it's almost like your higher self is always careful that they don't want to impose on the wishes of your human self you know like yes you have your destiny so to speak but your high, higher self isn't going to be like, that isn't what we discussed. You're not allowed to do that. Like, they're, I don't know why I, I said it in that voice. <laughs> but like, they're, you know, they want to respect the wishes of your human self to be free to explore this life and to have your own personality and your own preferences and your own desires because this is an opportunity for your higher self to also learn about you and learn how to best take care of you and your higher self really sees it as a two-way street they don't see themselves as above you or like your human self has to obey them and and submit to their plan they feel like you're learning from each other you're partnering with each other and you're equals like they they respect and look up to your earthly human self just as much as you might like respect and look up to your soul and see it as something sacred and it's kind of weird for me to talk about it this way because it, it kind of it makes it seem like you and your soul are, are two separate entities but i mean it's two aspects of you and your higher self wants to really respect them both and I think it's really important to your higher self to fully embrace the the humanity that they're experiencing right now you know they want to really lean into their spiritual side but also really lean into like their practical side and you know those aren't even exclusive of each other anyway but I think they're just they're really enjoying the human experience and and kind of want to lean into their humanity so if you ever feel it's funny, if you ever feel like guilt or shame surrounding your human desires, like for example, um, like material desires or pettiness, like if you're a little petty or a little sassy sometimes, or you're dealing with like some anger or like, a, I'm doing this with finger quotes, a low vibrational emotion or experience, and you feel like you're judging yourself, that is very very likely not coming from your higher self that's that's ironically actually coming from your ego like your ego is judging itself for having ego or like for having a human experience whereas your higher self is like oh my gosh this is so fun I, I feel like your higher self is just having a great time and is soaking everything in being a human and actually sees your human self as a teacher like just as much as you might see your higher self as a teacher, like, oh, the humility, 
I love it. I love your higher self. Oh my gosh. So over here, your person, very attractive as well. I'm hearing the word like smoldering, mysterious. That may kind of be ugh, this. I don't know why I keep making analogies of animals. I guess I'm using a spirit animal deck, but I'm just thinking of my cat Jasper. <laughs> because he was so handsome and he like he was a very handsome cat and he had the most beautiful green eyes and there was just something so like regal about him but he was a Scorpio too so he was kind of like dark and mysterious and I, I'm this is so weird to be comparing your person to a cat but I just had to he just came to my mind maybe your person has Scorpio placements or green eyes or they just have that kind of mysterious a vibe to them and you know handsome can be any gender they just have a coolness to them an attractiveness that is very cool and i think that both of you regardless of your gender i feel like people of the same gender think you are like so cool and badass and like they want to be like you and and look up to you um there's maybe even people of the same gender who want to date you but this reading is not about other people, it's about the two of you. But I just feel like both of you are coming across as, as role models to other people. And whereas the thing that people appreciate about you is like lifting their spirits and inspiring them and motivating them. The thing that people find so cool about your person is how safe and secure they feel around them. Like, I feel like they have one of those vibes that's just like, I'll take care of it. I'll figure it out. I'll make it work. And they just like hold everyone down. You know what I mean? And um, they're just so cool in times of stress and in times of pressure. And like, if you're with them, you will also remain calm and you will also believe that everything is going to be okay. They have this kind of anchoring force to them where they, they ground people. They bring people in. They, they're coming through as the element of earth and it's like oh yeah the wolf will know what to do or like the wolf is like the older sibling who takes care of people um and it, it just like comes naturally to them they you know this is not something they feel they have to put on to put people at ease it's authentic it comes naturally to them i feel like they just don't really stress and panic and they're like we'll figure it out at our own pace we'll figure it out at our own time everything's gonna be okay um they're very reliable reliable, trustworthy, responsible, and that comes across as really freaking cool. <laughs> like, that comes across as so cool. They also, I feel like they're not really easily influenced. I feel like growing up, this is probably someone who didn't give in to peer pressure. And so, you know, like, actually, I'm not going to speak for everyone, but I feel like sometimes younger, like, kids and teenagers, like, doing the rebellious thing is cool whereas i feel like this person was responsible and maybe they were like straight edge growing up and then that became cool because they were so confident and like no nah, i'm not i'm not gonna drink just because like all my friends are that's not my thing and everyone was like oh wow you're so cool like the way they just stay true to their values and don't care what everyone else is doing and don't worry and don't panic I hope I'm doing them justice. You just feel so grounded and safe and like everything's gonna be okay when you're with them and that makes them attractive and that makes them like handsome or beautiful. You're just like swooning at how together they have it, you know? And I talk about this a lot, but fire and earth is one of my favorite combos because it's like, it keeps you grounded and stable, but it's also fun and exciting, you know? So it's stable and predictable without being boring. And it's spontaneous and adventurous without being chaotic. They just, I feel like they just bring out really nice uh, qualities, qualities in each other. Um, it's kind of ironic because I feel like you are admired by so many, both of you. And so many people want to like flock to you and like be around your energy. But I feel like deep down, both of you are introverts and kind of loners. Like you might really like your own company and really need a lot of time to charge your social battery. And people might not realize that sometimes because I think a lot of people think like introvert equals shy, introvert equals 
like awkward. Introvert equals doesn't like being around people. And that's not really true. Like you guys are both really good with people and very engaging and friendly and charming and kind. So sometimes I feel like people wouldn't guess that you're introverted and people might not realize that you need time to decompress and that you may not always want to be talking to people. And I think naturally people want to come to you guys for advice because they're just like, they'll know what to do. Like they're so wise and maybe don't realize how that drains you sometimes. So I think setting boundaries is important for both of you. I don't, I don't get the feeling that people are intentionally trespassing your boundaries. They may just genuinely not realize because the way you just give and the way you just shine your light it seems effortless but at the same time you are human and you're i feel like you're both kind of introverted humans and you need your space um so what was i talking about anyway let's uh <laughs> i just spaced out a little bit so next with your person's energy they have the judgment card. So there's something about their energy that wakes people up to their purpose. I feel like this is kind of their, one of their soul's missions. This is part of the light work that they're doing here on earth is waking people up to their purpose. And I feel like it doesn't even matter what their purpose is. It doesn't even have to be similar to what your person is doing. Their soul has this gift of seeing what others' strengths are and seeing where they would thrive and empowering them and guiding them towards that. It's almost like they activate people by being around them. And you kind of do the same thing as well because by you living your purpose, you inspire people and make people believe that they can do it too. There's a lot of similarities between the two of you in the way in the way people perceive you and the way people look up to you and how and how you help people feel empowered and confident on their own journeys and and step into their purpose. I feel like your person helps people realize what their mission is and you help people feel that they can do it. And I also feel like you inspire people to embrace like you make spirituality a, accessible to people who don't really identify as deeply spiritual and you also encourage deeply spiritual people to embrace and accept their humanity you kind of it's like you're here on earth to keep that balance you know like let's not forget our spiritual essence and our spiritual origins but also let's remember that we were we came here to earth to be humans and let's not lose sight of our humanity or think that it's lesser than our spirituality. So yeah, you're here to bring that balance. You're just both here to show the truth to people really. Um, and I just realized this, this can have Scorpio energy. And I was thinking of my Scorpio cat Jasper before and justice is Libra energy. Um, I feel like with your person, they have a pretty cool story. Like they've been through some shit in their life. I do not think that your person incarnated into very easy circumstances, whether that pertains to family or um, like financial situation, their living situation. Maybe they were born into like an environmental climate or a political climate that that made growing up difficult for them but it there's kind of this feeling that against all odds they made it work and that's something that's probably very inspiring to you and inspiring to many others as well and i think both of you just give people strength like you're both very strong souls but it feels like they have more of a rugged strength and you have like a subtle strength because the gazelles just feel so like gentle and graceful. You have like a subtle power is kind of how it's coming through. Um, we have the numbers 26 and 29. So these could be relevant numbers. They could be relevant ages in your connection. Like when you or your person is 26 or 29 years of age, something important might happen in this connection. Um, 
could also be like your birth dates, like someone born on the 26th or the 29th. Uh, we also have the numbers 11 and 20. That could be significant. November 20th could be a relevant date or the year of 2011. These don't have to apply by the way, like what's more important is the energies that we're describing, but these little things like numbers and dates could be extra confirmation for you. And we are now gonna talk about this card in the middle, Akashic Waters. So this leads me to believe that there are hints of your past lives together on this planet Earth. In this lifetime, both of you will interact with the same places and the same things that you did in previous lifetimes. If there is a particular place or part of the world that you feel very called to, this is likely because of a past life and one that you had with your person. So for example, maybe there, it could even be like a place of worship. It could be um, like a, a nature environment, like a lake or something. Maybe in this lifetime, there's a, a lake that you like to go to to ponder life and you did the exact same thing in a past life. Or maybe there is a shrine that you visit and you feel really, really powerful energy or a church or something. And it's because you would go there in past lifetimes like to pray or there's a certain country or city that you feel really, really drawn to. And it's, again, you get the picture. It's because of a past life that you had with this person and, and you will go back to these places together. I just feel like this card is talking about past life memories being reactivated because of certain spots on the planet that you visit or certain sites that you go to, or like a certain natural environment that you, or a certain country that you go back to. And just being in that place will bring back memories that you had with this person and teach you more about the connection. I think the way to connect to this person more or to like learn more about your soul bond is to just pay attention to the places you feel called to. It's very much giving like places on earth. Um, I was even wondering if you might be at a distance because this looks like daytime, this looks like nighttime, this looks like daytime, this looks like nighttime. It's like they're flipped. So I wonder if you're like born on opposite sides of the world or you are on opposite sides of the world or you might feel called to the other side of the world because of a past life. But I think the piece of advice is just go where you feel called to because you will get insights about this connection and what it is. So finally, I want to read the passage from the guidebook for Akashic Waters. This is such a, oh, this is such a gorgeous guidebook. The artwork, the detail, I love it. Okay, um, Akashic Waters, and it's on pages 50 and 51. There's something relevant about 5150, but I can't, I can't remember what it is now. I'm, wait a minute. I just looked it up. It's a Van Halen album. That's what it was. Okay, so yeah, maybe that's significant for some of you, but let's get into this passage. Akashic Waters, timeless wisdom, past life recollection, activating dormant magic. I see beyond this earthly plane. I am multidimensional. I'm open to new waves of information. I'm always able to tune into my higher self. That's really beautiful as like, the energy that connects you because I feel like in a way tuning into your higher self will inherently also connect you to the higher self of this person and that you can readily connect to them at any time. They're always here for you. The Akasha, also known as the Akashic Records, is an ancient etheric library of wisdom that has been revered throughout the ages. 
Some see it as a living database that coexists with every soul, creature, and world across our universe, like a beautiful song expressing each of us as individual notes. So cool that there's a music reference and like the the number was related to a, a music album. This library also functions as a sacred container where every thought, word, action, and emotion that has ever existed since time immemorial is recorded. Here, the rules of time do not apply. Therefore, all information from the past, present, and future is accessible. We rarely see with just our eyes. As energetic beings, our deeper sensitivities may ignite new memories or dormant abilities within us. We are conduits for many frequencies and reflectors of the unseen. As intuitive creatures, we may also discern the language of our spirit through symbols, dreams, and the living archetypes we encounter. Perhaps there are patterns that call out to you now. You are being invited to explore the ever-evolving wisdom of your own Akashic records, to open your mind to new possibilities through exploring the many pages of your soul book. To do this, you may begin with setting an intention for how you would like to dive in. Take note of any questions you may have. From here, devote some quiet time where you may enter a receptive state. Meditation and deep relaxation are wonderful practices for accessing the Akasha. As you carve out time for exploring your own records, the information that surfaces may take on different forms. Perhaps you will receive sensory messages, blooming symbols, or even visuals of certain locations. Yes, it can be helpful to keep a journal to record your findings. Navigating the Akashic Records is similar to interpreting dreams. Only you are awake during this process. Don't forget to have fun as you turn your gaze inward and look out for signs and synchronicities along the way. You're being called to explore the Akashic Records as a way to learn more about this connection. What can I learn from my own Akashic records at this time? Just on the note of certain locations, I met someone before who, like growing up for years, had this recurring dream of walking down the same streets in the same village every time. And then years later was watching a documentary about a certain village and it was the village in his dreams. Like, like literally, the the camera would be like going down the street and he already knew like oh when they turn right they're gonna see this building and they're gonna see this scenery and it was exactly how he dreamed it which i just find so wild and i just feel like there is a certain location in the world that is calling to you or or that will call to you and i feel like there was something else i wanted to say but then i remembered that story and i got so excited yes it was that I don't know if you're familiar, there's a Japanese movie, I think in English the title is just like your name, it's Kimi no Nawa, and it's like, I don't know, it just reminded me of this passage because it's like these people connecting but they're like separated by years but they can like be at the same place but one of them is in the past and one of them is in the future but they're like communicating and it I don't know, it just reminded me of that. So, we're gonna get into the tarot now to see how your 5D connection influences your 3D experiences. So the first thing we're gonna see is, how does their higher self communicate with you? What's their preferred method of communication? What kind of signs and messages do they leave for you? We have the star. And we have the Knight of Pentacles, which also has a constellation on it. I wonder if this person is like your star family and this the place where you came from together, you can actually see in the night sky. Like the Pleiades, for example, you can see from Earth and you can probably see other star systems. I just don't know about the other ones. Um, I also really like that we have this jug just like pouring out and spilling out. I feel like that means that their higher self is very vocal with you. Even this cat with the trumpet. 
music could be a way that they communicate with you. Like music has come up many times. You or this person could be musicians. You could both be, or you might bond over liking the same music or a shared love for music. There could also be music from the past that activates something in you. Like if you listen to, to traditional instruments from a certain part of the world or you know, like ancient or medieval music or you know, something from the past could bring you back to a lifetime with this person. Um, I feel like, and also there's been quite a few messages about time not really existing the way we perceive it as humans. And so you may receive messages from your person but in the future or in the past. I feel like a future version of them talks to you a lot because the star, it is Aquarian energy. So it has this feeling of being a visionary and being, and being forward thinking. And in your younger years, I'm hearing in your formative years, you know, when you were still trying to figure yourself out, I feel like th a future version of them would like encourage you. I hope this doesn't get too confusing, but like the version of them who they are now maybe talked to your past self to encourage them to keep going. Because with the Knight of Pentacles, they're definitely helping you move forward. They're helping you stay perseverant. They help you stay consistent and disciplined. Like that's that's their earth energy that's their stable energy i feel like you have you're very creative and you're very smart and you have a lot of brilliant ideas but getting into a consistent routine and like disciplining yourself might not come naturally to you so that's something that they help you with and if you've been working on becoming more disciplined so that you can be successful like here on this physical plane um I think that's definitely like part of their influence or like like a future more mature version of them has helped you with that. Wow, I'm like I'm going all over the timelines so I hope that this is not too confusing. But speaking of timelines, you might receive messages and signs from them even just as you're like scrolling through your timeline on social media. Um I feel like there's a lot of messages about your connection in your birth charts with all of this heavy reference to stars um i don't know if you know this person's birth time if you're familiar with astrology you could probably figure it out just based on what you know of them you could ask them to show you but looking at like your birth charts and how they interact with each other you can learn a lot about your connection there I feel like this person's higher self will be a big motivator for your professional goals and for getting your shit together, so to speak, in the material world and really maturing. And because, you know, these, these kind of 3D things like discipline, consistency, routine, structure, you know, these are important so that your soul's full potential can come through and and impact the earth and i think that they help you with that a lot you likely we do have a mix of like air energy and earth energy so i think you get just as much signs from this person through like telepathy and claircognizance just as much as you would from like physical signs around you they're definitely around in your waking world as well. And I feel like what you especially might see is signs of like your star family connection. Signs confirming that you're like a part of the same soul family. How does your higher self communicate with them? And what kind of signs or messages do you leave for them and how do you help them so we have the seven of pentacles and the sun 
Oh, the star and the sun. That's so sweet. And the sun is a star. The seven of pentacles and the sun. <laughs> and the page of swords. So I feel like <laughs> when your person's higher self talks to you, they can be a bit more subtle and a bit more symbolic because they know that you'll get it. Like they know that you're tapped in. They know that you're aware of the connection and they know that you will see the signs. So I feel like they don't stress very much about like, how do I get the message through? How do I make this sign obvious? They're like, oh yeah, group number two will get it. Whereas I feel like your person in the 3D is kind of oblivious to things like signs and synchronicities. Like they're just very grounded. I feel like they're more practical type. So they might not be as open to receiving signs and messages from a higher self. They're probably the type to say like, oh, that's just a coincidence. You know, they need like tangible proof. And so I feel like your higher self has tried to be very obvious with them. Because I feel like you can say, oh, that's just a coincidence to a certain point. But at a certain point, it gets kind of freaky, right? You're like, okay, like something must be going on here. And because I'm just thinking of the star, the sun is a star. But the reason the sun is so big and bright and hot for us is because it's a lot closer. So I feel like your higher self gets a lot more up in their face, so to speak, and is like, look, look at the signs, look at this message. Hi, I'm right here. But they still haven't really noticed. I feel like with the seven of pentacles, it's showing that it's going to take a lot of time for them to realize that your higher self is communicating. I feel like maybe some seeds have been planted in them and maybe your spiritual teams have helped with this. Like a seed has been planted for their spiritual awareness and spiritual awakening, but, but the seeds have not really blossomed yet. Um, but that's not really important, right? Because we've been speaking throughout this reading about time not really existing. So the version of them who has realized that your higher selves are in communication already exists. And this one snapshot that we happen to be experiencing right now just happens to be showing us a version of them that hasn't realized yet. And it's just a matter of time. Um, it's funny, like, the I'm thinking of like Sleeping Beauty, how she like pricks her finger and falls asleep. I think that's what it is. She pricks her finger on a spindly thing and then goes into a slumber. I'm not a big Disney movie person, but <laughs> um, that could sort of be a metaphor of this person being like asleep. And I say that with finger quotes because like you don't have to be aware of your spirituality to be like an enlightened person and be you know fulfilling your potential but i feel like they just don't really pay attention to that side of things and i do wonder if it's if it's because it it had hurt them at one point in a past life to dive into the spiritual side of things i wonder if in the past they had like a bad experience with like with a psychic or a, a like a you know a, a self-proclaimed psychic with not good intentions or or maybe with like a negative entity like maybe they did really heavily work with non-physical energies in a past life and it, it led to something bad and so in this incarnation their soul was like nope like we're not touching that <laughs> and they're they might still have a little bit of wariness of like going into non-physical realms yeah like maybe they've had a bad paranormal experience or something like that because I, I do feel like there's some kind of wall that they have up with it where even the idea of just entertaining the possibility in a light-hearted way they're like no <laughs> they might not even actually I'm not sure 
There's just a message that came up about horror movies because, you know, they often deal with like paranormal stuff. I feel like they could either, they either just like will not touch horror movies at all or, or it does not affect them at all. Cause they're like, oh, that would never happen. You know, it's one or the other, but yeah, there's some wall up when it comes to non-physical things so that even if like to a more open-minded person, the signs are unmistakable. They're like, not really acknowledging it or they're not really acknowledging it for what it is, is, is kind of how it's coming through. But with the Page of Swords as well, this like represents someone who is very talkative and vocal and straightforward. Like I do feel like your higher self is trying and will never stop trying. This is kind of, this is a weird analogy too, but I think because we, we talked about them kind of being in a, a slumber, I just imagined like if, as if they were in a coma and you would go, oh, this is making me emotional. You would show up every single day and just talk to them for hours. And even if people told you like, they can't hear you, you're like, how do you know? Maybe they can hear me. And so even if they're not responding, you will just go and talk to them every single day because, because deep down, you know that you're planting some kind of seeds and deep down, you know that they do hear you. Oof. Emotional. Okay. Let's see. I mean, we kind of just answered this, but how aware is your person? How aware is your person that your higher self is communicating with them. Mm. We have the queen of swords. So yeah, they're, they're kind of like trying to rationalize things or explain things away. It's funny cause it's like they see the signs and they see the messages, I think, but just maybe don't see the meaning behind it or the message behind it. But that doesn't mean that their higher self can't hear you. This is just their 3D self. And then we have the Queen of Pentacles. Yeah, so again, there's that grounded, practical energy. And then the Queen of Swords, who is very logical, analytical that kind of vibe. So yeah, I feel like that just kind of reiterates what we've been talking about. Although it is interesting that two queens have come out. And I wonder if like tapping more into their feminine side and tapping more into their emotions could start to awaken some of their psychic abilities again. How aware are you mm, you're very aware <laughs> king of cups and they know this see like oh i have to change the battery yeah so it seems like you are very aware of their higher self's presence in your life which confirms like there's nothing that you're missing in terms of messages from them, you're not missing anything. You're not misinterpreting anything. I feel like you're in a really good place when it comes to knowing where you stand with this person's higher self and knowing their influence on your life. And I feel like you've really accepted it and honored it. And I think you have a lot of gratitude for this person's higher self. And I love that the King of Cups head is a, a star. Like, they're helping you become the star that you are really meant to be. And I feel like their higher self is so proud of you. And yeah, this like this is your soul family. This is your star family. This is such a beautiful connection. And I think like because you've connected, I think you've connected with your future self and with their future self. And in a way, like looked up to and been inspired by the future versions of you and they influenced you to grow into them. Like, it's so weird how we interact with, with different versions of ourselves through time. But what's also, and also like, they are really grateful too, because they're confident that you can hear them and that your heart is always open to them. And that's something that they really, really appreciate. 
and that you'll always continue to show up for them and and talk to them and guide their human self even if their human self hasn't really picked up on it yet like you just love them unconditionally and you're always going to be there to help them because honestly their human self doesn't really have to realize what's going on they can still benefit from your help and your messages and the love that you send them because you are planting seeds in their subconscious so like the energy and love you send them it's working it's impacting them and and their human self realizing that is not necessarily important and i also find it interesting that you're coming through as like a king because i feel like a lot of the time well no not a lot of the time it literally like water is is femininity and being in tune with your emotions and being in tune with your intuition it's seen as like a feminine thing but you're coming through as a masculine king and then being like skeptical and logical and in your head is, is seen as a masculine thing but then they're coming through as a, a queen with that energy so i wonder if like i I don't know what it means, but <laughs> like they may be learning to step into their feminine energy and you're learning to step into your masculine energy or you may kind of you may kind of take turns with it. It's <laughs> why am I thinking about, you know how like it's usually one of your nostrils can breathe better than the other and it like switches. <laughs> so like when you're feeling powerful in your masculine energy I f they will be powerful in their feminine energy and vice versa i feel like you kind of pass the balls back and forth and so you may not be in the same energy at the same time and i don't know why that's coming through and why there had to be a nostril analogy about it but there you go so for the end of this reading it could also there could also be something about like your left brain and your right brain like you guys just seem like two sides of a coin like when your left brain is on their right brain is on and then you switch i don't know okay so we're gonna get some messages with regards to what this person's higher self wants to tell you What does their higher self want to tell you? Ooh. I can, oh, I can change, can you? Okay. So their higher self is confirming that they can become a spiritual person, that they can become open to and connected to their deeper emotions, their intuition, their psychic abilities, that they can wake up to their spiritual nature, that they can embrace this other side. They, which is what you have mastered, they are inviting you to step into the energy that they have mastered, which is this grounded and down to earth energy, which facilitates worldly accomplishments and material accomplishments. Ooh, it's like you have reached mastery in the spiritual world. They have reached a mastery in the material world. And they're saying, now I'm ready to learn what you have mastered. Are you ready to learn what I have mastered? So it's like you both brought your own missions to fruition. And now you're going to like, share answers with each other <laughs> and they're saying like i'm ready for this i'm ready for this are you ready for this y'all ready for this what song is that that's that um let's get ready to rumble song isn't it <laughs> okay okay messages from their higher self oh 
I don't deserve to be in your life. I'm just going to take this as... I'm just going to take this as a really strong message of gratitude. And it's they're like, if you look up to me and admire me, like imagine how I feel about you. Like you might really look at this person in such a high light and they're like, look at you. Like what, what do you mean? <laughs> like, I can't believe I'm hearing like, I can't believe I get to breathe the same air as you. Their soul would even be like on earth, like group number two was here on earth and breathing this air a hundred years ago. And like, <laughs> like you guys just like love and respect each other so much. And it's so cute. What else? What does their higher self want you to know? Oh, we have, I didn't mean to, oh, I want to show you it's at the bottom. So I didn't mean to disappoint you. And then I dreamt about you. Oh my gosh. So I wonder if their higher self senses disappointment because at least in the current energies, it does kind of seem like your person in the 3D is not like super aware of this, um, spiritual connection at least and that doesn't mean that they don't like you or they don't feel anything towards you but you know you might be having this really cool like transformative spiritual experience around this connection and as humans like when people relate to us and when people are going through the same thing that's a very validating experience and like it's a beautiful thing to go through like transformative experiences together with someone and so there might be a part of you that feels kind of lonely. Like if you're going through this like crazy spiritual journey with the connection and on their end, it's like crickets. It's like if they're not feeling it or if they're not realizing it, then like, like, am I, I mean, I hope you don't feel this way, but like, am I just, is it just like in my head? Cause like if it was happening, wouldn't they feel it too? Which is not the case. They're just waking up at a different rate than you. But I think that their higher self can maybe sense that disappointment or that kind of loneliness on your end. And they may even suggest to you to connect more to that future version of them who is going through the spiritual experience because that version of them does exist. It may not be right now in this present moment, but that doesn't matter. Like the Akashic records say, it all exists at the same time. So if you're ever feeling lonely in the experience of the spiritual connection, you can connect to their higher self who is right here all the time and also to the future version of their 3D self who, who relates and who is experiencing the same things. Um, I hope that that make sense. And also they're saying that your person has dreamt about you recently. And so this might be another one of those seeds that has being is being planted, or maybe they had this dream about you because you planted seeds for them. So finally, we are going to get some advice from your spirit guides about this connection. Oh, so here is the image. And you know what's so funny? Like in group number one, they also got pictures of like a man and a woman together, um, which it doesn't mean that you and your person have to be a man and a woman. But on both of the images that group number one got, the feminine was on this, this side and the masculine was on this side. And now it's switched so there's just that feeling of like your energies switching now. Like from now on, you may be shifting more into a grounded energy and they may be shifting more into a spiritual energy. You may be shifting more into like a left brain driven energy and they may be shifting more into a right brain driven energy. You know, like something like this, you were each holding one end of the the polarity and now it's time to like like 
And this is how you do it. Like, it's like the, like you're going like this. <laughs> like the, you know, the DNA coils, they, and they're, yeah, anyway. <laughs> you go on opposite ends. Okay. Embrace. Oh, yes, literally though. Like this is it. Through each other, you find the missing pieces. Wow. Through each other, you find the missing pieces. And then I'm also noticing we have a common blue color scheme going on. Um, you or your person or both of you, your souls could appear as this color. I do believe that blue would be the color of a more advanced soul. This could also be referring to the throat chakra, more communication and more creativity and more expression and more clarity between the two of you. Also, I feel like this face is significant. Like one or both of you could have features similar to this person or you maybe looked like this in a past life. Reflection, give each other some space at the moment. Trust and have faith that all will work out for the best. I also like how the keywords together make embrace reflection. I feel like you can learn a lot from your past lives with this person, especially your past experiences on earth. And it's just so cool how you've been encouraged to like look to the past and look to the future because those are all parts of you that you can freely access and that can inform you. Okay, so my group number twos, <laughs> this is your reading. So this concludes the 5D aspect of your reading. If you would like to know more about your 3D connection, how your person is feeling, what's on their mind in terms of the future with you, and whether they will take action towards you, and if you want to an 18 plus extended reading, <laughs> be sure to check out Cindy's reading on her channel. I will have that link down below. I will also link her socials if you want to check out more of her work and support her art, which I really recommend that you do. I myself have been a customer of Cindy's art and I absolutely love it. I just, I stand intuitive queens and I love seeing um, spiritual wisdom and channeled messages put into art. It's just, oh, I love it so much. It's so inspiring. Thank you, Cindy, for doing what you do. Thank you for collaborating with me and thank you to you for watching and thank you for checking out Cindy if you do do that. I'm just so grateful to have you guys here. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself. Stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. If you enjoy my content and you'd like to find me elsewhere, I'm going to have linked down below my tarot reading Instagram, my personal Instagram, my Patreon, where you can watch tons of timeless, exclusive pick a card readings just like this one. You can also decide on topics for future readings. I will link my music channel, which includes the intro song of this video that is an original song. I will also have my latest release linked down below. And finally, my vlog channel and my merch, which features the floating temple that was at the start of this video. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, my channel, and anything I do. I really, really appreciate having you here, and I'm sending so much love to you, to your person, your higher selves, your spirit guides, your spiritual teams, and all of your loved ones, both here on earth and in the other realms. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye! Hi, number threes. So if you guys chose the fluorite, this is going to be your reading. Um, I just wanted to mention something before we get into it because before I started filming your group, I had this image come to me and I don't know if this is like uh, something from your past life with this person that is being shown to me or it could also be something that is symbolic of what you're experiencing in this lifetime. But what I saw is one of you 
like stubbornly waiting for the other person and, and nothing would stop you from staying there and waiting for them. And so there's like one of you waiting and then there's someone else, maybe even a group of people saying like, come on, no, really, like we have to go. And then this person saying, no, I told you, I'm not leaving without them. Like I'm not going anywhere unless they can come with me. So kind of an interesting image to come initially, but I just wanted to share that with you. And now let's get into the full breakdown of today's reading. We have a lot to get into. So this list is mostly just to organize my thoughts, <laughs> but um, you can also get a sneak peek of what we're gonna be doing in the reading today. Like I mentioned in the intro, um, the reading here on my channel is gonna be focused on your 5D connection. So we're gonna be looking at the energy between your higher selves. We will look at your higher self, your person's higher self, and the energy that connects you. Then we're gonna see how does their higher self communicate with you in your day-to-day -day life? What is their preferred style of communication? What type of signs and messages do they send your way? And how are they currently helping you? We'll also look at it the other way. So how does your higher self communicate with your person um, in their day-to-day -day life? What is your preferred style of communication to your person? What kind of signs and messages do you send them? And how are you currently helping them? We're going to see how aware they are of your higher self's presence in their life. How aware are they of the messages and signs that you send them? And same thing with you. How aware are you of your person's higher self in your life? How aware are you of the signs and messages that they send your way? Then at the end of the reading, we're going to see what their higher self would like to tell you right now. And then we'll get some advice from your spirit guides about this connection. So that is the reading here on my channel. And then again, like I mentioned in the intro, Cindy's reading is gonna focus more on the 3D aspect. She actually did kindly send me a list of what is in her reading. So I will put it up here on the screen. Um, but basically uh, she's gonna go through how your person is feeling, what's on their mind in terms of the future with you. Will they take action towards you? And there is also an extended reading that goes into some 18 plus stuff. So if you would like to get the full picture of your soul connection with this person, um, I would definitely check out her video as well. But for now, let's get into your reading on the 5D. So I have these cards here to represent you, these cards to represent your person, and then this in the middle will represent the energy that connects you. If listening to these descriptions, the energy feels flipped, so this sounds more like your person and this sounds more like you, you're very welcome to switch the energies around. However, um, if you don't see yourself anywhere here, then this is likely not your group. I should also mention, you might resonate with both sides and that is a strong sign that you and your person are mirroring each other. But without further ado, let's get started. So your energy, Oh, you're coming through as the otter. I love the otter. Then we have the hanged man. And we have celestite. For your person's energy, we have the panther. Strength, and Apache Tears. Okay, interesting how your person has two cards which have some kind of um, like wild cat or big cat energy. That might be like a significant spirit animal for them. Any sort of like feline animals, especially wild cats. And then the card to represent the energy that connects you is Rite of Passage. That's beautiful. I'm just looking at the moon in the sky here. This is a waning moon that will soon become a new moon. So I feel like this could be hinting in your spiritual connection. You are nearing the end of a cycle and you're about to enter into a new cycle with this person. It could be like a new cycle of incarnations or 
like a new, maybe you're like closing off some tough lessons and a new cycle is about to begin. Um, I also feel just like, just looking at these animals, I feel like this person's higher self is very protective of you. You just look like a very sweet and innocent creature. Like, look at this otter. And then this panther is like fiercely protecting you. I also think it's interesting how the colors surrounding your aura, it's kind of yellowish green and that mirrors what is in the panther's eyes, almost as if the panther being your person's higher self will always keep a close watch over you and will not take their eyes off of you. I feel like this person's higher self is a very powerful spirit guide for you and they offer you a very, very strong protection, especially protection over your heart. Uh, they really don't want you to get into harm's way. Even this Apache Tears, I believe this is Obsidian, which feels like a very protective stone to me. I actually have some on my, on my wrist today and I feel like that just really confirms that they're very, very protective over you. And then looking at this strength card, it's, it's kind of cool to see the duality between these two cats because the panther looks like, you know, they're kind of ferocious, they're ready to attack. And then this lion on the strength card looks like a very sweet and playful and soft and squishy and snuggly companion animal. And I feel like this is you who brings out that gentle nature to them. They appear to be they're very strong powerful maybe kind of rough around the edges like they have this power and they're not afraid to use it to protect their loved ones but then you see the side of them where they're letting their guard down and they can be like um more like playful and soft like bringing out their soft side I also think the infinity symbol is really sweet. I feel like that represents the eternal nature of your connection. And you having the hanged man, and also the otter. I was gonna say like you having the hanged man, it kind of reminds me of that image I saw at the start of the reading of someone stubbornly waiting for the other person. And I feel like this hanged man is confirming that you will always wait for each other. And then I was thinking of otters and how it's the otters, right, who hold hands when they're sleeping so that they don't drift apart from each other. I think it's really important to your higher selves that you stay together. And I feel like this is representing how you will keep incarnating together over and over. There may even have been a situation between your souls in the past where like one of you left earth or left whatever world you were living in and then waited for the other because you didn't want to move on to the next lifetime unless they could go with you you're like i don't know i don't want to go yet i want to wait for them and so whoever left first like waited there and remained as a guide until it was time for the other to leave that world too and then you could move on together. I feel like one thing about your connection is you wait for each other and you don't leave each other behind. And I think that's also in the sense of like your spiritual growth and your personal growth. You know, if at some point in your journey, one of you like learns a lesson first or advances in your spiritual journey first, you will kind of like, patiently wait for the other to meet you so that so that you never get too far ahead it really feels like you want to stay together the word buddy system is coming to mind it's like you just want to make sure that the other isn't alone there's like a really strong loyalty between the two of you that i just think is so beautiful looking at your energy in the middle rite of passage this is an energy that connects you and i actually even though this is a reading about the 5d connection i do think that this is talking about something happening in your 3d realities where both of you are about to go through some sort of rite of passage in your life it could be the same thing 
Like you could be going through the same rite of passage together. You could be going through different ones in your individual lives, but there is some new cycle that you are ready to go through in your life, like moving on to the next chapter. And your spiritual teams are basically saying this next chapter, in this next chapter, this soul connection is going to be a big focus of it. Like it's going to play a very pivotal role in it. You're really going to start to see it become a major theme in your life. And you're going to start to learn a lot more about this connection and how it's here to serve you. So some things that had previously not been revealed to you in this current cycle are going to be revealed in the next one because like it's time, like you're ready. And your spiritual team is kind of coming through as, you know when you're a kid and you're curious about things and your parents are like, oh, I'll tell you when you're older, son. I feel like this is you now, like you're older. You're ready to go through this rite of passage to the next cycle of your life. And now you are ready to, you're ready to learn more about this connection is how it's coming through. So. The advice that I could give to get closer to this person and and to feel more connected in the soul world is to embrace new chapters in your life, embrace leveling up, embrace transformation. And that might require you to step into the unknown. Whenever I see like an archway or a portal or a gate or something like that in a deck's artwork, or sorry, in a card's artwork, I mean, I guess you can say either, but <laughs> it, it does make me think of stepping into the unknown in some way and, and stepping into a new chapter. What I could say, like the fact that you're coming through as um, the hanged man and your person is coming through as strength, neither of these are very forward motion y. So I'm, I'm wondering if your 3D selves are kind of resisting this transition right now. And I feel like from your perspective, and it's funny because the otter looks so curious. You're both looking towards the portal. You're both aware of it. You can both maybe feel that a new chapter is coming, but there's kind of like a resistance or an apprehension. Pisces is a mutable sign and is also a highly psychic sign. And Celestite feels highly psychic to me too. But then we have the number of the devil, which is like limiting beliefs. So I feel like you are kind of on the fence about going through some transition in your life. You're on the fence about stepping into the unknown, but it's like, you're very aware of, you're very self-aware in this process. I feel like you can very much hear your higher self nudging you to go through this gateway into the next chapter of your life. You can hear your soul telling you that and you acknowledge it, but your fear of the unknown and your limiting beliefs are also in your head and you're influenced by both and you are aware of yourself being influenced by both. This self-awareness is a good thing because it means that the power your limiting beliefs have over you are already on their way out. Like, I feel like as soon as you look at them, they lose a significant amount of their power. But it feels like you're still kind of like, ah, like maybe you're kind of stalling it. You're like, I know I have to make this transition in my life. I know that this new chapter of my life is going to start eventually, but I'm scared. I'm now that I think about it, I'm in an energy like that right now. Like I've been putting off responding to this email, um, which will once I send that email, I've effectively made a decision about the next chapter of my life. And I've already made it in my heart, but I'm psyching myself out because I know that once I send that email, it's actually going to be real. And that's really scary to me. And I know I have to send it eventually because there's a deadline to respond. So I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm just putting it off because I'm scared. And I see myself being scared and I know that it's silly. And yet here I am not having sent the email yet. So it's, it's something like this that I feel like you're going through, where you're being pulled, you hear the call of your soul, but you also hear your ego psyching you out. And so you're just here, like right at the threshold of this 
rite of passage and just just afraid of the unknown but oh and also you know it's so beautiful like this apache tears this obsidian um one of its spiritual uses is to allow transformation and to break through limiting beliefs so i wonder if like their higher self is giving you courage to go for it and, and assuring you that they'll protect you even if the unknown is scary so on your person's end i feel like there's also some transition that they're being called to go through in their life but their reason for resisting it is a bit different rather than being a fear of the unknown i think that they have and i see this sometimes in readings and just in people in general they have some sort of weird not weird but like distorted relationship they have a distorted relationship with like patience and resilience and strength where they feel like if they let go and embrace a new chapter they're giving up on the last one they're a quitter so just an example to illustrate the difference between your two energies let's say for both of you this rite of passage has to do with like changing jobs and that's what your soul is calling you to do right now so the way you may be looking at it right now is like ah like i know my soul is calling me to change jobs but i'm i'm scared of leaving my current job because i don't know like where the next opportunity is going to come from and like i don't know when money's going to come in for me it's like you're afraid of what's to come whereas for your person they're like i can't leave my job because then that means i'm giving up that means i'm a quitter people will think that i lack discipline people will think that i'm not committed like or they will feel like they're not committed it's there's a part of them there's a part of them that feels like sticking around and struggling is like honorable it means that you have endurance it means that you're resilient so they might stay in situations they might have a habit of staying in situations that don't serve them for too long because their ego frames it as like look at you doing the difficult thing like even though it's not easy you're sticking around and and that can be that can be the right thing to do sometimes but the whole point is that you're discerning about it you know you don't just stick around because sticking around is inherently good and i feel like that's what they do sometimes it's like you have to discern case by case if this is something that is worth staying in it's not just about proving that you can endure something which i feel like is kind of an ego trap that they they fall into it's kind of like it, like if you were staying in a toxic relationship but you feel good about it because you're like that just shows like that just shows how committed i am and it's like eh, okay that's maybe not the best thing to do for you like sometimes letting go is the best thing to do and it doesn't have to be a judgment on who you are as a person and the ironic thing is that maybe they're both hard you know like sticking around in a situation that doesn't serve you is hard and letting go and plunging into the unknown is also hard so like just pick your difficulty and sometimes sometimes i feel like they pick the difficulty that is just difficult for no reason rather than picking the difficulty that leads to growth and expansion so yeah i feel like both of you are at like you're right at the threshold of this rite of passage and it's it's passing through it and embracing a new chapter of your life and embracing change then you're going to see this soul connection play such a big role in your life you're going to learn so much about it you're going to learn so much about yourself like it's so freaking exciting um i'm just i feel like this candle is really representing your energy i it's aso's magician candle i'm not going to i can't show the label cuz then hot wax will spill everywhere but basically it's red and it has the magician card on it and it says manifestation power and alchemy and this candle is like the energy that you guys need to embody okay so the last thing i want to do is read um 
the passage from the guidebook for this rite of passage card. Oh, I love the artwork of this deck. Rite of passage. So it is on pages 136 and 137. Swimming towards the horizon, the obstacle is the doorway. I will find a way through. I see the tests as markers of my inner power and strength. An ancient gate stands at the brink of the open ocean, welcoming you into warm celestial waters ahead. After swimming through lengths of tunnels and tides, it is a welcomed sign that you are moving in the right direction. To finally reach this portal may feel like the ultimate test at the very last stretch of a challenge. And I just got like overcome with emotion, but there is a light ahead and you can almost touch it, feel it and taste it. Notice if you experience a shift in values as this next stage becomes filled with undeniable truths that were previously obscured. <gasps> Isn't that literally what I said though? This next stage becomes filled with undeniable truths that were previously obscured. So things that you couldn't see before about this connection are now ready to be revealed to you. Like it's all coming to light. New light shines into the darkness as you move forward and you are drawn to this warmth like a moth to a flame. A rite of passage often appears when we are in the midst of passing through the shadows. Stepping over the threshold into the unknown, we are forced to move beyond fear, which is not always comfortable. The key is to find the light of potential within this challenge, to see how it feeds your strength and summons your brilliance. Life transformations help us soulfully evolve, much like the catapulting moments that trigger our growth beyond our control. We do not grow just once, nor do we heal just once. Over and over again, each rite of passage comes with its own milestones and lessons. Some may feel small, while others appear insurmountable. These may guide us inward, deepening our connection to self. In other moments, they guide us outward into spaces and experiences that make our world even larger. Either way, we awaken to new wonder. If you are feeling lost, overwhelmed, or that a certain goal is too big, see this as an indication of the scope of your dreams. The currents always shift, and they are here to prepare you for this next vital stage. Your feelings are the navigation points that help you move with perseverance. This is not meant to be easy, and time is of the essence. You may be challenged beyond belief, but to endure this last test, trusting that you are more than capable, is to prepare you for anything. Anchor into the intention of your spirit and cross this next doorway into a new way of being. What final challenge am I now working through? Is that not such a big confirmation that like you're reaching the final stretch of a cycle in your life? Like this is about to be a new moon, a completely clean slate. Ooh, like I have chills. I'm so excited for what's to come for this group. So we're gonna go into your tarot now and see how your 5D connection impacts each other in the 3D. So the first thing we're gonna see is how your person's higher self communicates with you. What kind of messages and signs do they send you or what is their preferred method of communication? How are they currently helping you? We have the moon. Ah, the moon is like exactly the same, exactly the same as on this card. Further confirmation, you are nearing the end of a cycle. You are closing off. You're tying up loose ends. You're clearing away the final challenges. We also have the five of wands and, and the four of wands. Oh my gosh. Okay. So with the moon here, it's quite likely that this person's higher self communicates to you a lot at night. 
This could just be a time where your connection feels stronger as the world quiets down. It could also be that you communicate a lot in your dreams. You might have really vivid dreams with this person or really like intense, powerful dreams with them, which should definitely be paid attention to. Um, and I do think that a lot of the ways they communicate to you are subtle or subliminal. The word subliminal is coming to my mind or subconscious. So it's not necessarily something obvious that is out there in the world. There may be things out there in the world that trigger something in your subconscious to, to give you a message from their higher self, but it's not so straightforward. Like, um, like your conscious mind wouldn't understand why that message came to you in that way. You just know that that's what the message is. It's kind of like, like if you read tarot cards, you might be familiar with this where like, you know, the five of wands, it's textbook meaning is like, conflict and and fighting and different energies being at odds but then if you're doing a tarot reading you could be staring at the five of wands and you're like and you're like i don't know why but i feel like this five of wands is is saying that you should work in real estate like where does that even come from you know it it comes from the subconscious it comes from a deeper intuition the conscious mind cannot explain why looking at the five of wands gave you that message, but your soul recognizes and knows that message to be true. So like you could be out in the world and be looking at a, like a flower and you're just like mesmerized by the flower. And all of a sudden you realize that their higher self is, is telling you that you need to believe in yourself more. There's nothing about a flower consciously that that translates to that, but something about that flower like triggered something in your subconscious to get that message from their higher self. I hope that that makes sense. You might not really understand the ways of their higher self and how they get certain messages to you, um, but they find a way to do it. And, and sometimes it, it might just be messages that come up out of the blue. Like you could be taking a shower, your mind is idle and something just floats up to the surface and it's a message from their higher self. I do think that you probably receive messages from their higher self best when your mind is idle. And, you know, we were just talking about the five of wands. It's, it's a chaotic energy. It's a frazzled energy. Um, in, in terms of it talking about competition and conflict, you know, in our waking lives, like, you know, so many companies are vying for our attention. We're constantly being bombarded with advertisements and information and, uh, you know, pe even people in our lives, everyone's trying to get our attention, trying to get us to do stuff for them. And in our waking lives, which are so hectic, our, our attention is being pulled in a million different ways. And it can sometimes be hard to receive messages in that kind of energy. And maybe that's why they talk to you more at night. Like if maybe things are more quiet or peaceful for you at night. Um, or like whenever your winding down time is. So, you know, maybe you work night shifts and you come home in the morning. And so it's, it's like after you come home and you can wind down, that's when they will talk to you more. It's whenever your mind is like winding down and idle. Because uh, that's also when subconscious things can kind of bubble up to the surface. And maybe something that they are helping you with is becoming more well acquainted with your subconscious thoughts and desires and fears that drive you. Like they're trying to help you make your unconscious conscious. And they've probably helped you realize how your limiting beliefs are holding you back and helped bring your fear of the unknown to the surface and so you because it, it was coming through that you're self-aware of it and i think they want to help you like this apache tears stands for help you release fears help you release limiting beliefs so that you can transform 
with the four of wands, this feels like they want to help you make your wish comes true and any wish wishes come true and anything that stands in the way of your wishes coming true, they want to combat it. They want to clear it. They want to burn it away. Fire feels, it feels like transmuting. Yeah, anything that stands in the way of you making your dreams come true, they want to help clear that away. And that's one of the ways that they protect you because protecting you also means protecting your dreams. Like they see your dreams and desires as an extension of you and they see them as precious. So anything that, that hinders or threatens what you want, whether it's external circumstances or your own limiting beliefs, like they're pulling up. They're, they will not they'll not let that happen. They want to clear the way for you to make your dreams come true. Like literally reach up in the sky and pull the stars down for you. And there's also a feeling with the four of wands that they want to help you safely find your way home, which I think is what you're doing here, going through this rite of passage and learning more about this connection, which ultimately you'll learn more about yourself. That will be you coming home to yourself. Oh my gosh, I was just holding the deck over my lap and this card fell out of my lap and it's the hanged man. And this imagery looks so much like someone being freed. Like they're tied up and they're being freed. They want to help free you, free you from your fears that you may not realize yet. Free you from your subconscious fears so that you can go through this archway. Yeah. And I think a lot of the time they talk to you through your own like subconscious thoughts and emotions, also like impulses. If you suddenly feel a really strong urge or impulse to do something, to learn something, to look into something, to reach out to someone, that is a lot of the time their higher self nudging you. And it might come on very, very suddenly. Um, yeah, so also with this four of wands, they may, you may hear from them more often when you're at home or like in a place where you feel comfortable. Like if you're out in public or you're out in a stimulating environment, um, you may not hear from them as much because it's like they don't want to overwhelm you. How does your higher self communicate with them? We have the page of wands. It's funny that this second one is taking such a long time to come out. Ah, we have the Page of Wands and the Magician. Um, what I picked up from that second card taking a while to come out is that sometimes when your higher self communicates to them, they don't really realize the message in the moment. They kind of realize it after. So let's say they had a dream about you right after the dream they might wake up and just be like oh interesting go about their life and then like halfway through the day they're like oh my gosh i just realized what that dream was trying to tell me i just realized why i had that dream or they might dream about you and forget i i do this a lot like i'll forget that i had a dream the night before and then something during the day like triggers the memory and i'm like oh my gosh i just remembered that I had a dream last night that there was an earthquake or something. Uh, so that, that kind of stuff might happen to them a lot where like they don't realize in the moment that it's a sign from you or that it's a message from you, but they realize it later. Uh, we do have the magician here. So you could be manifesting this person or this person could be manifesting you and if you like can't get this person off of your mind or like suddenly have thoughts about them, it could be because they're manifesting you or pulling on your energy or vice versa. I do feel, <laughs> I was gonna say it before and then I, I didn't, but it's coming up again. For those of you who have already met this person, I do feel like they're very 
um, physically attracted to you and so they might think if it's that kind of relationship of course they might think of you in you know like physical situations steamy situations maybe you'll want to check out cindy's 18 plus extended to get into that more <laughs> but I, I do feel like they think of you often in that way and so like if you suddenly start thinking about them or like they pop up in your mind it could be because they're heavily thinking about you in that way like i just feel like they're really attracted to you and they kind of crave your um your physical connection they also they may sometimes not realize when your higher self is communicating with them because they already think about you a lot and so they probably just think that it's them thinking about you you know like if they had a dream about you they would just be like yeah that makes sense because i think about you a lot so like of course you would pop up in my dream and it, it you know it kind of gets maybe gets lost in all the other thoughts and fantasies and daydreams they have about you and they don't realize like oh you like your higher self is actually visiting them because the magician they may feel like it's something of their making that it's something they created or something that they manifested and maybe it is you know maybe their higher your higher self is appearing because they manifested your higher self um but yeah i think they definitely feel your energy as like passion as a warmth as inspiration i think you inspire this person to like work hard to create things to believe in themselves like to get out there and make their dreams happen so kind of similar to the influence that that they have on you um and we kind of just answered this but how aware is your person of your higher self's presence in their life and how aware are they of the signs and messages you give them we have the seven of cups yeah so they're definitely like aware of them but i think they kind of get confused because they they already like think about you a lot and are really attracted to your energy um like you popping up in their head they think is just them daydreaming about you and they maybe don't really see it as like your higher self is visiting them your higher self is talking to them And the seven of cups is also again making me think that they dream about you a lot and we have the king of wands or the page of wands and we have the king of wands and there's a lot of like hands there's a lot of hands and there's a lot of fire um i wonder if there's something about hands or like a, even hands here or like a physical is there just a lot of hands in this deck not on there's some there's some it's not like a hand themed deck but all of these cards seem to have a lot of hands and feet too i wonder if there's some physical sensation that you or your person feel in your extremities when your higher selves communicate like you might feel a tingling or warmth in your extremities like in your hands your fingers your feet your toes or or some kind of physical sensation like almost like getting a hug from their higher self or getting a back rub from their higher self or like having your face caressed by their higher self um it's like they feel you they either feel you physically like in terms of physical sensations or physical arousal or or feeling your energy pushes them into taking action like feeling your energy moves them to do things like your energy comes through as inspiration but again 
with this King of Wands, I feel like sometimes they mistake it for their own, their own imagination or their own willpower, which I shouldn't say mistake it because of course their own imagination and their own willpower is influencing them too. But your higher self kind of blends in with that, you know, like they're daydreaming about you and your higher self is visiting them and it just kind of blends together. So they don't really distinct, distinctly see like, oh, group number three's higher self is trying to communicate with me. Or like they're motivating themselves and your higher self is also motivating them and it kind of just blends together and they just, their experience of it is just like, oh, I'm feeling motivated, motivated right now. So yeah, they are, I guess you could say they are kind of aware. <laughs> So how aware are you? How aware are you of, I'm gonna move these over a bit, of your person's higher self? How aware are you of their signs and messages? We have, ah! We have the Ace of Cups and the Five of Cups coming out together. And we have the Two of Swords. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, you know what's interesting though? In this deck, you know, very often we see the Two Swords crossing each other and there's this feeling of having to pick one, like having to go one way or the other. But in this two of swords, the swords, like, they're both going through the heart and they're both, it kind of feels more like coexisting. And it's just so cool that the two of swords came out because the ace of cups is like happiness and the five of cups is sadness. These are two opposite energies. And I feel like this two of swords is confirming that rather than being one or the other, it's both. It's like the light and the dark coexisting or happy and sad coexisting. And maybe there's a message here about you. Ah, yeah. You can feel it all. You feel it all from them because mm, you have committed you have committed to feeling all of your emotions and embracing all of yourself, like happy and sad, good and bad with finger quotes, light and dark, light and shadow. Um, and doing this also opens you up to receiving more varied information from higher beings and from your person's higher self. I think this is just saying like you feel it all. You can maybe pick up on their emotions as well. Whether they're feeling really happy or whether they're feeling sad, you can pick up on that. I also think, I don't really know what this means, but there's a feeling of not, not associating Mm -hmm. not associating a value of, of good or bad on your psychic connection. I feel like for you, it just is, you know? It's just like a part of you. It's something that you're so accustomed to. You're not, I feel like you're not like, oh my God, this is so awesome that we have this psychic connection. But you're also not like, ugh, this sucks. Like, I wish I didn't have to feel all of this. It just kind of is, you know, it just is what it is. And you're, you embrace it, you know, like sometimes it brings in positive energy. Sometimes it brings in negative energy, but it's all serving me. And I'm here for all of it. I feel like that's kind of your vibe, if that makes sense. So for the last part of the reading, we are going to see what your person's higher self would like to tell you right now. So we have 
we both need closure which that is totally confirmation that you are both closing out a cycle um this still doesn't confirm if the cycle you're ending is the same thing or if it's like something going on in your respective lives but both of you at this point in your journey you are at the end of a cycle and it needs to end you may also be closing off a cycle in your connection and like this is your higher self saying we need to make peace with what happened and we need to let go of the past Ooh, that's so nice. You make me feel grounded. And as I was holding up that card, the camera wanted to focus on this little otter. So I feel like your loyalty makes them feel safe. Like they really feel, they never feel like they're alone. Even their 3D self, I feel like they never feel alone because they know that they always have a friend in you. And they'll always feel safe when they're around you. And then we have no. So you make this person feel safe. They recognizing that they need to close out a cycle. They need to start saying no to something because this energy is them just like sticking around and sticking around because they feel it's like they've learned that endurance is a good thing resilience is a good thing patience is a good thing and it can be if you are using it with discernment if you're using it on to an end that will serve you and i feel like they need the courage to start saying no to things that aren't serving them and you will give them that courage because they know that as long as you're here they're safe like that's the effect that you have on them and that's maybe something that like a way in which they're benefiting from the connection with your higher self that they maybe feel on like a subliminal or a subconscious level but that would be hard for their 3d self to put into words it's like as long as your soul is nearby i i know that i'm safe but that's like on a soul level, that's the effect that you're having on them, which I think is really beautiful. So finally, we are going to get some advice from your spirit guides for this connection. So this card just came out. That's a beautiful image. Time. You are trying too hard. Give it time. So that is a message about this connection. And okay, we can take all of those. How many is that? Okay, there's five that came out, but we're just going to read all of them. <laughs> Even though for the other groups, there was just two, all of these want to come out. It is important right now to take a step back and spend some time alone. Instead of placing your focus on another, now is the time to give to yourself. So those messages go together well. Surrender. <laughs> At times we must surrender. Ah! Look, at times we must surrender the old before something new can enter our lives. So that's embracing the unknown, letting go of the old before we know like how or when or what the new thing will be. Let go and all will work out. Yeah, I feel like it's, I don't know if you've ever played a game, like a video game or a computer game where like there's... How do I describe this? Like, okay, I used to play Nancy Drew mystery games when I was a kid. And like, it was, it was weird. Cause like, you'd have to talk to other characters in the game uh, to progress and they would give you certain information, but like you would have to do something else in the game first. Like you would have to reach a certain stage in the game to trigger, to make the game show you the conversation that you have with that person where they give you the information and so when you're playing the game for like a second or third time you'd be like why isn't jeff having this conversation with me and telling me this stuff that i need to know 
and it will be like, oh, because you didn't fix the because you didn't fix the furnace yet. Like you have to get to that part of the game first. So there's like different levels and like things to accomplish that will then trigger the game like progressing and you getting the information you need to move forward, if that makes sense. And I, I feel like there's something going on like this in your life where it's like, you want to push this connection forward, but like, it's not, it's not the right order. Like we have to let go of something and go through this passage first and that and then that's gonna trigger all this new information coming in about the connection. There's a feeling of like stepping out of order. Yeah. Deep in your heart, you already know the answer. Do what feels right. Beware of what you are projecting for the qualities you admire in one another are qualities you both possess. Equally so, the qualities you don't like are also your own reflection. That's an interesting one because I feel like your, your like resistance or apprehension in moving forward is mirroring each other and influencing each other. And then we have look inside yourself, examine what is causing you to feel this way, which I think you are doing. So more than likely, this is an applause from your spirit guides. So group number threes, this is your reading. We got a lot of extra cards there at the end. So this is what we're seeing for your 5D connection. If you would like to see what's going on in the 3D, what is on your person's mind, what is in their head in terms of your future together and whether they will take action. Uh, be sure to check out Cindy's reading and she does have the 18 plus extended if you're interested in that too. Um, but if you do want to check out her reading, I'll have it linked down below. I will also link her socials if you want to check her out and support her art, which I strongly recommend. I have been a customer of her art a few times and it is so magical. I'm just blown away by her talent in, in all different areas and so grateful that I could collaborate with her. So thank you very much to Cindy for the collab and thank you so much to you guys for letting me read for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself. Stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. If you enjoy my content and you'd like to find me elsewhere, I'm going to have linked down below my tarot reading Instagram, my personal Instagram, my Patreon where you can watch tons of timeless exclusive pick a card readings just like this one. You can also decide on topics for future readings. I will link my music channel, which includes the intro song of this video that is an original song. I will also have my latest release link down below. And finally, my vlog channel and my merch, which features the floating temple that was at the start of this video. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, my channel, and anything I do. I really, really appreciate having you here and I'm sending so much love to you to your person, your higher selves, your spirit guides, your spiritual teams, and all of your loved ones, both here on earth and in the other realms. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Hi, number fours. So if you guys chose the sphalerite, this is going to be a reading. This is my first piece of sphalerite, by the way. I hadn't actually even heard of it before, but I saw it at the crystal shop and she stole my heart. So. This is the list of the full reading that we're going to do today. Like I mentioned in the intro, the reading here on my channel is more so going to focus on the 5D aspect of your connection. So we're going to start by looking at the energy between your higher selves. We're going to look at the energy of your higher self, your person's higher self, and the energy that connects you. Then we are going to get into the tarot and see how does your person's higher self communicate with you? What is their preferred style of communication? What sorts of messages and signs do they send you? And how are they helping you in your day-to-day -day life? Then we will flip it around and see how your higher self communicates with your person, your preferred style of communication, the types of signs and messages that you send to your person and how you are helping your person in their day-to-day -day life. Next, we will see how aware your person currently is 
of your higher self's presence in their life? How aware are they of the signs and messages that you send to them? And same thing for you. How aware are you of your person's higher self in your life? How aware are you of the signs and messages that they are sending you? And then at the end of the reading, we will see what your person's higher self would like to tell you right now. And we'll also get some advice from your spirit guides about this connection. So that's going to be the reading here on my channel. Cindy was so kind to also send me the list of what will be covered in her reading. So I'm going to put it up on the screen now. Basically, her reading is going to focus more on the 3D aspect of your connection. So what is in your person's mind for the future with you? What are their intentions? Are they going to be taking any action towards you? And there is also an 18 plus extended reading over on Cindy's channel. So if you want to get a full picture of what is going on in your connection, I would definitely recommend checking out Cindy's video as well. But for now, let's get into our 5D reading. So I have these cards here to represent your energy, these cards to represent your person, and this card in the middle will represent the energy that connects you. So for your energy, we have the lizard, we have the empress, and watermelon tourmaline. Then for your person's energy, we have the mouse. The world. and Dalmatian stone. First thing I'm noticing is that both of you, your major arcana are number three cards. Like the Empress is card number three. The world is 21, which reduces to three. So the number three could be significant to this connection. Maybe it's a number that you see, and this is how you know like their higher self is communicating with you or your person is thinking about you. The number three also makes me think of like collaborating or birthing something together. It, it could be a literal child that you are birthing together, but it can also be just creating something together in the world. Like maybe you will have a business with this person. Maybe you'll work on creative projects with this person. Maybe you will invent something together. Let me actually go ahead and look at this middle card. I don't know why I didn't flip it over initially. So for the energy that is connecting you, we have celestial waters. One thing about your person's energy as well, it is coming through as quite childlike, especially the word childlike wonder is coming to my mind. They have the Dalmatian stone, which you can actually see there's a little child's face inside the stone. This is a stone that helps you connect to your inner child. And even the fact that this card is the number 19, that relates to the sun card, which is very child coded as well. And then just this little mouse, he just looks so sweet. And he has all these little lights around him, which I'm just imagining this little creature being in awe of all the wonder that is around them. It could be that your person is a newer soul. And so this whole experience of life and consciousness is also just new and exciting to them. And it's so much to take in. It could also be that in this particular incarnation, their soul is stepping into a new experience. For example, maybe this world is quite new to them. Maybe there are a lot of their previous incarnations or all of them were in other places. And so this kind of 3D world, this kind of physical form is all like very new and exciting to them. Or maybe this is their first incarnation or one of the first where their incarnated avatar will have spiritual awareness. And so, you know, getting to be this incarnated being and also getting to experience like spirituality and get to sort of see behind the veil, so to speak, and to, and to get to experience a spiritual connection while incarnated, that might be something that's kind of new for them as well. But there's just this feeling of like, even the sparkles on this world card, it, it feels like shiny and exciting. They're just in a very uh, curious, 
happy. It's the sweetest thing. Their higher self is in such a, a sweet energy. And I also wonder if this person, like in your connection, helps you to get in touch with your inner child, helps you to get in touch with your playful and adventurous side and to not take life so seriously. You know, this is the lighthearted side of it. They could also be a catalyst for you to heal and release some of the more heavier energies when it comes to your childhood, especially if there's any heaviness that is blocking you from accessing this carefree and playful energy. I think that one of the big things your souls want to experience together is just like play, play and pleasure and creating on this earth without any pressure, without any restrictions, to just create from the heart and see what happens and to not put too high expectations on yourselves. Just experience the joy of creating. You are the empress who is like a master creator, a master manifester. Creativity and abundance just emanates from her. I feel like both of you, I, I used the word creative like 18 times in this reading, but I just feel like both of you are such creative souls. You may both be meant to go down a creative path in this lifetime, like professionally, or to do something that is a bit off the beaten path so that you can use your own original ideas to to create success. You may have different areas of expertise and different specialties, and you can blend those together to create something really interesting and new. I get a sense from both of your souls that you're very excited about what you're going to do in this lifetime. You, on the other hand, while while your person is coming through as like new and fresh and childlike wonder, you seem to be coming through as a bit more like seasoned <laughs> is how it's coming through. So maybe you have a bit more experience with manifesting or more experience on this earthly plane or more experience like working with non-physical energies while incarnated in a physical body. There's something you're more experienced in that I feel like you're going to help your person with. And what's so beautiful about this is that your energy is really going to nurture their wonder and their curiosity and their desire to learn and their desire to experiment. I feel like you are really holding that energy and, and nurturing it and helping them grow in this lifetime. You are coming through as someone who just has such a big heart, such a warm heart. Like the Empress already, she is so, and I just say she because the Empress is feminine. You don't have to be a she, but the Empress is so nurturing loving, caring, generous, makes everyone she comes in contact with feel so loved and special and so important. She's ruled by the planet of Venus, which of course is very loving. It's even in a heart shape. And then you have watermelon tourmaline, which is related to the heart. And then lizards make me think of warmth because like it's fire and lizards like to be in warm places. So just putting all of this together, you are a very warm person. Your person is very warm too. Like they have that sun energy, but you just have such a warm and loving heart. And I, I feel like the way it's coming through, your person's spiritual team is saying that your person is in very good hands with you in this lifetime. I, I feel like you're really going to bring out such wonderful quality qualities in each other. Also, um, Brazil could be significant. The only reason I say that is because I very recently watched um, a Japanese TV program where they went to Brazil and there was like a tourmaline mine. They went with a, a rock specialist and they went to like an amethyst mine and a tourmaline mine. So yeah, Brazil could be significant for some of you. Um, or just like warm climates. This lizard is really giving me warm climate vibes. Um, yeah, so this seems to be your energy. I do feel like your higher self sends your person a lot of love all the time and they really do feel it and they really do benefit from it. Their higher self is talking to you too, but with this mouse, it may be pretty quiet and pretty 
subtle, you know, like a little mouse squeak. But I also think the way they communicate to you is pretty uh, plain and simple. Meaning that when your person's higher self sends you messages, you probably don't have to do that much work in deciphering it it will be very plain because I'm just thinking of this childlike energy and how, you know, children just have this beautiful way of telling the truth and telling you straight and just, just being very pure about their intentions. So like, for example, if this person's higher self wanted to say, I love you, you would probably see it written out like I love you somewhere or you might see hearts or you might see images of people like hugging. It, it wouldn't be this kind of vague symbolic thing that you have to do like five layers of deciphering to figure out what they're saying. Um, it's very plain and out in the open like that. And also like if you have dreams about this person, there's probably not that much interpreting that needs to happen. So like if you had a dream that you are at the beach with them, it probably means they want to go to the beach with you. It's, it's that kind of thing. So with celestial waters here, this does feel like a higher dimensional energy. So I do think that the more you explore your spirituality, the more you advance in your spiritual journey, the closer you will feel to this person. I want to go ahead and read the passage from the guidebook okay celestial waters this is on page 62 and 63 in case those numbers are significant heaven on earth power of prayer i have the ability to create my own paradise i call upon my guardian angels for unconditional love and support and that's just it i feel like you guys are creating together your own paradise here on earth. Angels are beings of light who exist in the seventh dimension and beyond. Intimate with the divine source, they share the resonance of creation and have been caretakers of the cosmos since the very beginning. Some sing to continuously weave love into manifest form. Others watch over the elements, stars, plants, rocks, animals, everything that is. Angels are one with divine will. As opposed to free will, they are unconditionally loving towards all of creation. We are each assigned a guardian angel from birth who stays with us for our entire life. There are also other spirit guides who may step in and out at different stages of our lives, depending on the support we need on our journeys. Although angels are powerful beings, they honor our free will and do not interfere with our choices. They are always by our side and their assistance is only ever a prayer away. To connect with your angel, speak your intention with love and gratitude in your heart. When you receive this card, know that your guardian angel is with you, sending you crystalline waters of clearing and protection. Every particle of light that surrounds you is blessed with this divine force, allowing you to cut any negative tethers you've been tied to. Ask for support in alleviating these burdens. Give thanks and know that you are worthy of love and to move with grace on this earth. Every day we are reborn in some way. As we learn to harness our connection with our own divine sources, we can learn to adjust and adapt what we allow into our lives. We create space for more purification in all that we do and allow the signs and guideposts to illuminate our path from within. Wow. So connecting to your angels is also a way to connect more to your person and to understand more about this connection. I almost wonder, you know, this passage was largely about angels. You and your person may have a guardian angel who is working with both of you. You may have like spirit guides or spiritual team members who are working with both of you. You have maybe even had experiences guiding each other. Um, there was there were messages about creation as well. I just really think that you guys are meant to create something together. And I also wanted to say, um, like the numbers three, six, nine could be significant to you in some way. And also your angels want to encourage you to put more focus on like energetic purification, energetic clearing, um, being on this earth, you can pick up some muddier energy or denser energy 
from the surrounding environment, from other people, um, negative thoughts that are just lingering and dampening your energy or putting a damper is maybe how you say it. Um, more frequently throughout your day-to-day -day life, I think your angels are wanting to help you clear away any heavier energies and keep purifying your energy. And purifying just really means like removing what is not your authentic energy, which is what you thrive in the most. So they may be encouraging you or feel free, inviting you is maybe a better way to say it. They're inviting you to call them in more to cleanse you, to purify you. This will help with your manifestations. This will help with your psychic abilities. This will help with communicating with higher beings. And overall, it will just make you feel lighter, um, have more energy, have a better mood. Um, they're also saying you will get better at discerning like what is coming from your own inner voice, what is coming from a loving source, what is coming from your spiritual team. So there will be less confusion when you're channeling messages or when you're trying to get answers. Um, you will know what is coming from a loving and helpful source. That will be a discernment that becomes a lot easier as you ask them to clear you, as you ask them to purify the energy around you. That will also bring clarity in your channeling. If you do readings of any kind, whether that's for yourself or others, you'll find that you're able to interpret the messages a lot easier. Um, you know, some people have trouble reading for themselves and it's easy for others. Some people have trouble reading for others and it's easier for themselves. You will be able to do both with ease. And I wonder even like if you're not a reader, maybe <laughs> your angels are kind of hinting that that's something you would be very good at. Um, but that's such a lovely energy. One last thing to mention, in case these resonate, these could be confirmation. We have Taurus and Libra energy here with the Empress. Um, I would also say that Aquarius energy is significant and Leo energy because we did have that sun energy with the number 19. So now we are going to get into your tarot and well I mean we did have tarot here but we are going to see how this 5d connection impacts you in your day-to-day -day lives so first let's see how your person's higher self communicates with you how does your person's that's a lot <laughs> I'm not going to take all of those but like a bunch of cards just fell out at once, so that may be a sign that they communicate with you a lot. We have the Five of Swords. And we all, oh, and we have Justice. The Five of Swords and Justice. So, the voice of your person's higher self, I do feel like it's quiet, it's calm, but it's there very frequently. It's almost like this constant loving voice that is whispering to you. With the five of swords here, this image is really interesting and I feel very telling for this group. The swords literally look like fingers that are pointing at this person. This to me looks like a person, you, who maybe has like a self-deprecating inner voice, a very harsh inner critic, a part of you that blames you for everything and says like, it's your fault, you didn't do enough, you shouldn't have done that. Just constantly finding some finger to point at you. And I feel like your person's higher self is constantly in your corner trying to dispel trying to debunk these voices, trying to combat this misinformation, which is what they're calling it. Justice is about truth. And so what they're saying is that these fingers that you point on their self, why can't I talk today? These fingers that you point at yourself are not coming from a place of truth. It is blatantly false. Um, the self-deprecating comments that they make, the judgmental comments that they make. Um, it's not true It's and it's not helpful, it's just mean. And so the biggest thing that your person's higher self wants to do for you is to combat these mean voices or 
to balance them out with kindness. You know, like these are the scales. I feel like positive things you say about yourself and negative things you say about yourself, like the negative is so much heavier and is outweighing it. And so their higher self comes in to tip it back into balance and they want to make the positive outweigh the negative. So anytime like you make a mean comment about yourself, anytime you're getting down on yourself and judging yourself, they are there offering an alternative idea. So when you have these thoughts of like, maybe I shouldn't be so hard on myself, just know that your person's higher self is right there being like, exactly, <laughs> that's what we want to see more of. All they want is for you to be so kind to yourself. And honestly, from a soul perspective, that is so beautiful. And that's making me really emotional because we have seen how kind and generous and compassionate you are to everyone else. And I think their higher self's wish is that you show yourself that same kindness. You deserve that same kindness. You deserve it from others and you also deserve to show it to yourself. And so this little mouse is going to be there whispering in your ear. They will not let any negative or mean comment that goes through your head go unchallenged. And they will keep dispelling the myths. That is not true and they will offer you kindness. They will offer you a positive way to see yourself. That what this person wants most is for you to love yourself and be kind to yourself. And see the truth. And see the truth of how beautiful you are. We have Libra energy coming out again, which we mentioned could be significant. And we have Aquarius energy coming out again, which I felt was significant. The fact that both of these are air signs I definitely think that their higher self communicates to you through your thoughts. They help promote comforting thoughts in you, reassuring thoughts in you, um, thoughts that are kind to yourself. And also, I feel like they do communicate with words. So, you know, words that you may see written down, words that you might overhear. You know, we mentioned earlier that their higher self is quite literal and straightforward when they send messages to you. So if they want to say they love you, you will probably literally see the words I love you somewhere or you will hear them spoken somewhere. So look out for words. They want it, they use words because they want it to be, be very plain what they're saying. And that doesn't mean that they don't use any symbolism but they really want to spell it out so that you know how much they love you and how amazing you are. And if they do use symbolism, I feel like it's really, really clear. Like a heart, for example. That is like such an obvious sign of love. How does your higher self communicate with them? How does your higher self communicate with your person? We have the four of pentacles. and the seven of cups you also you also communicate to your person very often your higher selves like you are in each other's top contacts i feel like you are just constantly in communication um with the number four this is particularly for me a card that makes me think of numbers like repeating numbers or a number that they keep seeing especially with money because this is a coins card and it has a person holding on to coins so i don't know if this has ever happened to you where like you go to the store and then your total is like eleven dollars and eleven cents or maybe you tap your transit card like when you're going on the subway and you have like three dollars and 33 cents left on your card um like those kind of angel numbers appearing in transactions. That could be something specific that happens for them. Another thing is like they catch the same time every single day, maybe even twice a day. 
if they're if their clock if they use the 12 hour clock where you get the same time twice a day um so like maybe every single day they catch um uh, like 5 55 a.m and 5 55 p.m like without fail they will see that time um it doesn't necessarily have to be a repeating number maybe they see like three six nine a lot like we talked about for some reason i wanted to say one three six <laughs> i don't know if that is significant but i do feel like they see uh repeating numbers and this is how your higher self lets them know that they are around and i do wonder if it's some number that inherently reminds them of you like your birthday or the day that you guys met or something like that and the four of pentacles does also make me think of physical objects or things in their physical surroundings. So they could, for example, they could see feathers on the ground. That's an object that they can see. They could see coins on the ground. Um, it doesn't have to be objects, just physical, tangible things. It could even be like animals or flowers or a plane flying overhead. These kind of tangible things that they see around them. There are certain things that remind them of you and let them know that you are there. With the Seven of Cups, this is definitely related to dreaming. So you communicate with them in dreams as well. Um, and it's it's pretty straightforward. They may receive downloads in their waking life too. But I feel like they would be more open to your messages in a dream because their like conscious analyzing mind is out of the way. Um, when they receive downloads from you in their waking life, I think it just more so comes through as an emotion. So they might be going about their day and all of a sudden they feel warm and fuzzy in their heart. And they're like, ah, group number four, um, which is a download from you. Like maybe your higher self is saying like, hi, I hope you're having a good day. Take good care of yourself. I love you. But they just perceive it as like an, an emotion getting full of like a warm and fuzzy emotion and thinking about you. They may not really get like, oh, group number four's higher self is here. Group number four's higher self is talking to me. Whereas like in a dream, they could actually see you come forward and hear you say a specific message to them. So it just, it comes through more clearly in a dream for them, basically. Yeah. And also I just feel like in their waking life, there's a lot going on. <laughs> there's a lot going on in the waking world and things can get kind of like drowned out sometimes. Okay, so next we are going to see how aware are they? How aware is your person of your higher self's presence? How aware is your person of the signs and messages that come through? Hmm. Ooh, okay. We have the lovers. Roses could be a relevant sign as well. Because we do have a recurring theme of roses. Okay, and then we have the Knight of Cups with even more roses. Okay, so your person has definitely picked up on some synchronicities and not only have they noticed them, but I do think they kind of suspect that there's something to them. So, you know, in the example of them seeing repeating numbers, not only have they noticed that that's happening, they're like, oh, that's interesting. I see this time every day or I see this number every day. Um, they are curious about it. They're like, I wonder what that could mean rather than just saying like, oh, it must be a coincidence. I, I feel like they do, they do sense that there's some kind of deeper meaning to it. And I think they do sense that it is pertaining to you, even if they don't 
know what specifically the message is i think that intuitively they do know it's about you with the lovers and the knight of cups here um they've also like if this is someone you know already in the 3d they probably have noticed some interesting synchronicities with you as well um like for example maybe they're going going about their day and all of a sudden they're like hmm pizza sounds really good right now i feel like pizza and then you text them and you're like i just had pizza <laughs> and they're like whoa wait what <laughs> it's like they will think something or maybe they think like um I wonder, I wonder if group number four needs help. And then they're like, why would I just have that thought? Why would I think they need help? And then you text them and you're like, I'm moving next week. I'm so overwhelmed. It's like this weird thing where they have the thought and then you say something that confirms it. And so they know very much that like, these are not just random coincidences. And also it only happens with you. So like, if this was a random coincidence, wouldn't it happen with things that don't have to do with you also? Like, it just seems to them that these synchronicities must be trying to tell them something about you or about, um, about the connection with you. And I guess in some ways this could happen even if you don't know each other in the 3D because I do think at the very least they are connecting with you energetically and they are um, seeing you in their dreams but they feel like you kind of have this way of non-verbally communicating or like you're you're on some kind of same wavelength together like they're picking up that there's a little bit of um like telepathic stuff going on and I actually think that Oh, I'm hearing like they look forward to it. You know, they kind of started to hope. Like, I hope I see that synchronicity again today. I hope that I have another cool little sync with group number four. They want, you know, they sense that there's maybe that kind of telepathy going on and they like it and they want it to be there. And it's something that they've come to, that they've come to expect. And I also think they wonder if you are experiencing the same thing. So let's see, how aware are you? How aware are you of your person's higher self? How aware are you of their signs and messages? We do have Gemini energy here as well. I don't think I have said Gemini yet, but I have mentioned all the air signs. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. How aware are you of your person's higher self? How aware are you of their messages and signs? It's funny, like, when I was shuffling for how aware are they, and when I'm shuffling for how aware are you, they're taking a long time to come out. So I wonder if for both of you, it kind of took some time for you to really acknowledge and embrace that what you were experiencing was a sign of this soul connection. Like it could be for some of you that you were kind of in denial at first, like, oh no, I'm sure I'm sure it's just a coincidence. I'm sure it's just in my head. Maybe you were even trying to avoid it for some reason, or you just wanted to be have like a healthy level of skepticism and be like, okay, okay, spirit, if this is really what's going on, I'm going to need to see like, yeah, I feel like one or both of you was kind of like testing it. You're like, I'm not going to jump to conclusions just yet, but like, if this is really what's going on, then let me see this sign it feels like one or both of you kind of tested it and after like over a long period of time you were like okay i'm convinced now <laughs> and i feel like now you're both quite sure that these synchronicities are representing your connection how aware are you of your person's higher self Oh, 
interesting. We have the Four of Cups. Actually, that makes sense. The Four of Cups and the Hermit. So, and now we have Virgo energy. And now I feel like I've named a lot of zodiac signs, but that's okay. So, the Four of Cups, as soon as this came out, I was like, okay, so there are some messages from your person's higher self that you are missing. And the reason I say that makes sense is because um, obviously the artwork on this deck is a bit different from the traditional artwork, but in many Four of Cups cards, we see this person who is like sitting on the ground and they have their arms folded. They just look kind of dissatisfied and they're staring at three cups that are placed in front of them and they're not really happy with any of them. Then a fourth cup is coming out from the side, like offering them an alternate gift or an alternate option or an alternate perspective, but they don't even notice it because they're so focused on being upset at the cups in front of them and like being hmm about it. <laughs> so if you have a strong inner critic, if you have a strong inner voice that is judgmental towards you and it's just hard on you then you may not notice all of the messages of kindness and love that get sent to you from your person's higher self it's either that you don't notice them or you may even dismiss them and i do feel like they come at you pretty frequently with these messages and you're just like, ah, oh, that's not for me. You know, like for some reason, the example that's coming to my mind is like, you are beautiful. I just imagine someone like walking outside and maybe there's a big billboard somewhere or like an ad and it says, you are beautiful. And that's their higher self trying to talk to you. And it's not that you don't see the sign, but you're just like, oh, they're not talking about me clearly. And like, just keep walking. It's like they are coming at you from different directions with all of these messages of kindness and love. And there's like some part of you that is not willing to receive it or feels like you can't receive it. Um, and I think that definitely working on like self kindness would allow you to see more of the messages that they send you on a daily basis because it's like I feel like I do feel like you are seeing the messages or hearing the messages but you just feel like it's not for you you may even for example you may even watch readings like this and you get messages of like your person loves you so much you, your person thinks you're amazing your person thinks you're beautiful and you're like yeah this is not my group and it's like what do you mean yes it is like there's a part of you I feel that that rejects or dismisses a lot of the love that comes from your person's higher self. Luckily for us, they are like a mouse chewing through a wire. <laughs> they are very persistent about this and they will always be there whispering in your ear until they can, um, what, what do you call it? Till they can cut through the BS of, of the harshness of your mind and of that inner judgment. Yeah. And then we have the hermit because I do think they communicate a lot to you from within, like, especially through your thoughts. I wonder if sometimes you do hear them, but you just think it's like one of your own thoughts, but it's actually like them talking to you. If it's positive, of course, only positive and loving messages from them. And also I feel like with the hermit, cause this is Virgo energy. I feel like they help you find solutions. Like they help you find solutions to your problems. 
Um, so if you're feeling stuck, like if you're in a creative rut or if you don't know how to organize your day, when you're thinking, hmm, like what would make the most sense for me to do? How should I solve this problem? They might pop little suggestions into your mind and you're like, oh yeah, let me do that. But you may not, so it's like you receive the message, but you may not realize that was their higher self like helping you out. It's like they help you to, to get organized, to analyze the situation, to solve your problems. Um, they assist you. They, they assist and promote those like kind and constructive and solution-based thinking for you. They're like a little, a little sidekick in your head. <laughs> That's how it's coming through. So for the last part of the reading, we are going to see what their higher self would like to tell you right now. What would your person's higher self like to tell you right now? We have, it was just a small bump in the road. I don't know what your current 3D relationship is with this person, but if you're going through any kind of struggles with them, or if you're just in an unfavorable situation and things are not the way that you want them to be, I feel like their higher self is telling you that whatever you may be going through right now with them, whatever like struggles you're going through is so small compared to the forever's worth of happiness that you will experience together and that you have experienced together. To your higher selves who are much bigger, your human problems are small. And I don't mean that in the sense of belittling them, like they're small and therefore not important. More like to us, to, to the higher selves, your problems are small and therefore we can carry them easily for you. So please don't get too stressed out about it. What else would their higher self like to tell you? Oh, this card like, mm, no, it kind of wanted to come out, but didn't. I wonder if that's a sign like your person has been thinking about telling you something, but then they're kind of hesitant. We have be patient, the time will come. Um, this could be a message for your connection, but I also think like just judging from what we just picked up about them, I feel like there is something that this person wants to tell you, but they're like a little bit um, hesitant about it right now. And so at this time, they're just like waiting, waiting until they feel ready or waiting for the right time and are maybe asking you to be patient with them because maybe you can tell that they've, They've been trying to come forward. They've been thinking about coming out of their shell and coming towards you, but then they don't. And so they may just be saying like, I need a bit more time until I'm ready and please be patient with me. You know, because with the mouse, like they could be a little bit shy, you know? You know what I just noticed? I'm very, look, yes, yeah, they're confirming that. There's something that they're shy to tell you. Um, what I just noticed that is very beautiful is that the lizard and the mouse are facing each other. Like, oh my God, look what's at the bottom. Oh my gosh, okay, look what's at the bottom of the deck. There are so many things I should have said. The timing just wasn't right. Like, that's literally exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. So there's something that they want to tell you and maybe they actually had an opportunity to tell you and you could sense they were about to say something to you and then backed out of it and that maybe was confusing or maybe even frustrating for you. So they're like, there's so many things I should have said. The timing just wasn't right. Be patient. The time will come. So their higher self is like acknowledging, yes, in that moment, there were a lot of things I wanted to say to you. I, maybe they kind of chickened out or they, yeah, they got nervous. The timing wasn't right. And they're asking you to be patient because there will be a right time. 
And this maybe is even something that their higher self has already told you, but it's still important that you hear it from the 3D person too, to know that the 3D person is on the same page and to really like solidify it in this 3D reality. But yeah, like I was saying, um, I think it's really beautiful and a really good sign that the lizard and the mouse are facing each other. You're both aware of the connection. You're both exploring it. It doesn't look like either of you is running away from it. There may be a bit of hesitancy. We may be inching forward, but we are moving forward. So for the last part of the reading, we're going to get some advice from your spirit guides about the connection. So let's see what they have to say. Woo. Oh, it's an angel card. Um, that's so interesting. Like when I was reading the passage from the celestial waters card and it was speaking a lot about angels, one thing that I wanted to mention after reading the passage was that you might resonate with the idea of being an earth angel. And then I forgot to say it. And so the fact that this is coming out again, I feel like I was supposed to say that to you and I just forgot. So yeah, this may be a confirmation for some of you who feel like earth angels. I also wanted to say that you or your person or both of you may have a purpose in this lifetime of protecting the earth of creating or inventing something that will bring beneficial changes to the environment, to nature, to animals, or that will inspire people to deepen their bond to mother earth and honor her more. Like something you do or create in this lifetime could help humans feel more connected to their mother earth and just like respect life more, even other humans, you know? humans i feel like a lot of the time we talk about like humans and then we talk about nature as if they're not the same thing but but we are very much part of nature and so if we respect each other we are respecting nature okay let's see what message we have on this card the past is now behind you release it and embrace new possibilities a new path is now available to you follow it with faith there could be some advice from your spirit guides to release the past when it comes to this connection, especially if you are visited by thoughts of like could have, what is it? Could have, should have, would have, you know, like I shouldn't have said that or if only I had done things differently, maybe we could be closer now or maybe we could be together now. like. Thinking about what you should or shouldn't have done in the past um, is not going to be helpful. And the same thing, like for any endeavors in your life, now is the best time to move forward. Now is the best time to start a new chapter. It's, it's no use thinking about like, oh, I've wasted so much time already. I should have started sooner. Now is the best time to start. Okay, we'll get one more from this deck. What else do your spirit guides want you to know? Or what advice do they have for you about this connection? I'm not going to show the image because there is a, a boob on it and YouTube might get mad at me. Or actually, I can just... Sorry, I'm like... I really like this deck, but shuffling heart-shaped cards is not <laughs> the most graceful thing. And then I get like... I get uncomfortable when the hearts are not all like uh lined up okay yeah so this is the card this is the image and you can see like they're lying and looking into their reflection so there may be some mirroring going on between you and your person and then the message says emotions are a natural and necessary part of life but they can also distort your perception and cloud your vision in order to see things clearly you must let go of resentment. Interesting. There's, do you have resentment for the stuff that this person should have said, but didn't, or that they haven't said things yet, or 
or are there certain things you're judging yourself for in the past? Because there is a lot about letting go of the past and like releasing harsh judgments. Especially from yourself, I think. Um, I do think that all emotions are valid and all emotions are guides. But it's very important that we understand what the emotion is trying to tell us so that it is guided properly. Like for example, anger is a valid and helpful emotion, but misguided anger can be detrimental. So it's always really important to go back to the root of it and see where it's coming from. And there's also, I want to say like there's a difference between yeah, that's, that's what it is. An emotion is inherently valid, but whether it is being projected in the right place and is, is helpful is another story. Like, this is, this is how it's coming to my mind. And I don't know if this is your exact situation, but just to illustrate what I mean about emotions, like... If someone had trust issues because they were hurt in the past and then their partner does something that is not actually objectively shady but that triggers this person because they're sensitive to it, those feelings of anger that come up are a thousand percent valid. The reason that anger is coming up is because this person has been hurt and so that anger is there to protect them from something bad happening again. And it may also be anger that this person is feeling for their past self or for the failure to protect their past self or anger towards the person in the past who hurt them. So the question when this emotion comes up is not like, do I have a right to be angry? Or is this anger valid? Because the answer is always yes. You always have a right to feel the way you feel and it's always valid, but there's like a need to go a level deeper and say, is this anger actually directed at my partner? It might feel like that because what my partner did triggered the anger, but this anger may not actually be directed at them and it might be detrimental to project this anger onto them right now. So just like, yes, your emotions are speaking to you. They're never, they're never nonsense. They're always there for a reason, but... It's just important that you know what they are speaking to you and, and why and to whom they are speaking and from whom they are speaking. Like it might be a past version of you who is angry um, and the present version of you maybe can make a different choice in that moment. I hope that that makes sense, but yeah. So those are all of the messages for your reading. Thank you so much for letting me do this reading for you. If you would like to find out more about what's going on in your 3D connection, what is on your person's mind when it comes to your connection and the future with you, what their intentions are, whether they will take action towards you, be sure to check out Cindy's video as well. I will link it down below and I'll also link her socials if you would like to check her out and support her art which I highly recommend. I am a customer of her art. I've had a few commissions done and it is just so magical and moving and she's so talented and I'm so grateful that I was able to collaborate with her. So thank you so much, Cindy, for collabing. I don't know if you're even watching this, but thank you. <laughs> and thank you so much to you guys for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself. Stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. If you enjoy my content and you'd like to find me elsewhere, I'm going to have a link down below. My tarot reading Instagram, my personal Instagram, my Patreon, where you can watch tons of timeless, exclusive pick a card readings just like this one. And you can also decide on topics for future readings. I will link my music channel, which includes the intro song of this video. That is an original song. I will also have my latest release link down below. And finally, I will link my vlog channel and my merch, which features the floating temple that was at the start of this video. 
Thank you guys so much for supporting me, my channel, and anything I do. I really, really appreciate having you here and I'm sending so much love to you, to your person, your higher selves, your spirit guides, your spiritual team, and all of your loved ones, both here on earth and in the other realms. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.